in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed we're going to challenge the spirit of fear there are many of us that cannot even travel around because you think will i die you know and all kinds of things for god has not given us the spirit of fear listen 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 let me tell you something death is a spirit it can run away from certain people and you must become that kind of person are you listening to me you can't be moving around you have no covenant with death are you listening to me the Bible says a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right side. He said none shall harm you. But with your eyes shall you see and, and watch and see the reward of the wicked. Hallelujah. Talking about the angels. He said they will bear you up on their wings so that you will not even dash your feet against the stone. You are going to pray and say I challenge fear. We challenge fear. Fear of traveling, fear of moving around. We challenge fear. We are sons of light. We are daughters of light. We have no business with your fruitful works of darkness. We command an immunity that follows the citizens of this kingdom. We declare that we are immune. We are men of understanding and we refuse to fear. We command judgment upon the spirit of fear. Be gone from our camp. Be gone from our midst. In the name of Jesus. The fear of death that puts men under bondage. The Bible says you will be blessed in your going out. You will be blessed in your coming in. Come on, pray in tongues just for a minute. Shake away the spirit of fear. Shake away the thoughts of death. You shall leave. He said, let Reuben leave. Let Reuben leave. Although he has been cursed, but let Reuben leave. Lord, we will leave. We choose life. We choose life. We choose blessing. Hallelujah. Say after me, I refuse to fear. Say it, I refuse to fear. Say, thou shalt not be afraid of the arrow that flies by day, nor the noisome pestilence. He didn't tell you there are no arrows flying around. He said, you shall not be afraid. In other words, it does not concern me. You must believe it. Hallelujah. Don't leave your house thinking and wondering and seeing every bike man moving. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. Nothing just happens. Hallelujah. I speak a very big parable to you. Nothing just happens. This is why we are praying. You must learn to interpret things from the lens of the spirit. And you will see that beyond the activities that happen, nothing just happens. Are you getting what I'm saying? Vehicles don't just crisscross themselves like that. Spiritual wickedness that move around to make sure they jeopardize the destinies of men. But you know what to do. Hallelujah. Father, we give you the praise. We bless you because you are faithful. Thank you for tonight. Pray in one minute and say, Father, I have come again change me i've come to hear mambra zuzede malakapaya i've come to contact understanding
Hallelujah. Give us understanding, O oh Lord. We incline our hearts to your word. It will make us wise. Your word is giving us wisdom. Teaching us how to walk like gods upon the earth. And tonight, Lord, we expose our spirits to the light of your word. Let there be transformations. Let there be paradigm shifts, O oh God. Help us, empower us, challenge us. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Walk around to ten people, hug them, tell them happy Valentine. Happy Valentine. Whether you know them or not, Happy Valentine. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please sit down. Once again, we welcome everybody inside and outside. There's a lot to do tonight. We're still on our series on financial dominion. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever more. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Lord. Strings, strings, strings. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Lord. Pray from your heart. It's a simple prayer. I love you. More than money, more than power, more than faith. Declare your love for him on this day. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. One more time. Sing, I love you, Lord. I love you forever. I love you forever. Declare our love for you. Thank you for the privilege of access to light. Light that transforms. Light that builds. Light that changes. Lord, in the name of Jesus tonight, we pray that you will help us. We cry for the help of the Spirit. Open our eyes to the secrets of kingdom wealth. Grant us access to light that will change us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 35, 27. Mm. Last week, we started by talking a lot about, it was just an introduction. We ran through the course curriculum. What is all this on the screen? I thought we finished this whole Valentine thing. Please, let's get to work. No more distraction. It's time to concentrate. Psalm 35, verse 27. Let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified who hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Hallelujah. 
Last week I began sharing with us and I told us that it's very wasteful to give people information that they are not prepared to receive. Hallelujah. They will not recognize it, they will not value it, and it will not be profitable unto them. And I did tell us last week that um, there are certain steps we need to take if we desire change and transformation in any area of our life, especially our finance. Number one, that we must recognize the need to be financially blessed. Hallelujah. You must see the need. You must see the evil of poverty. You must see the limitation that poverty and lack brings upon the body of Christ and even to the agenda of God. I told you that recognition creates a sense of responsibility. In fact, there is a whole book about recognition by Mike Murdoch. It's called The Law of Recognition. Recognizing the need breaks limitations so that you don't have limitations stopping you. And then it creates dissatisfaction. Hallelujah. And then the second point is that you go for knowledge. Having recognized that there is a need to be blessed, you go for knowledge. Hallelujah. And then number three, you take action. Consistent application of the things that you've heard. How many of us still remember all these things? Praise God. I'm just reviewing it quickly for the sake of those who were not here last week. If you were not here, the messages are available. Please get it and listen, listen and listen again. I don't know how many times I've listened to last week's message. And um, we discussed the concept of prosperity. <clears throat> And I, I said to us last week that prosperity comes from the word prosper. Remember? And it means what? To do well. Praise the Lord. To prosper means to possess a means, an ability, or power. Please, in this series, I want to be very, very slow, very straightforward. I don't want to bring any ambiguity. I just want us to get this as principle so that everyone will understand. Hallelujah. We don't just want a few people to understand. We want everybody to understand. It means to possess a means, an ability or power to meet the needs of mankind. Regardless of what those needs may be. And remember we discussed five areas of prosperity. Can you remember number one? Spiritual prosperity. Number two? Mental prosperity. Number three? bodily prosperity that's the prosperity of your health number four financial prosperity number five so i told us that for many people listen every time they talk about prosperity they think money hallelujah now you can see that financial prosperity is just one of the aspects of kingdom prosperity now in the world system they just say happiness joy and so on and so forth you see a lot of that in business books but Everything we are discussing here is with a kingdom paradigm. Are you getting what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. I told us that to be prosperous spiritually means to be born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, and that you understand the ways and the principles of the kingdom. So your degree of prosperity spiritually is not just measured by being born again alone or being filled with the Holy Spirit alone. The degree to which you are understanding the ways and the principles of the kingdom is one of the indices that we use to measure spiritual prosperity. And then finally, the degree to which you are conforming to the image and the character of Christ. So when you say man is spiritually prosperous, you are not just saying that man is a church goer. No. That he understands the kingdom. Hallelujah. Number two mental prosperity we said how that it culminates in the soundness of your mind how much your mind is well developed and deployed remember i stressed last week and i'll stress it again that christianity does not make people fools are you getting my point christianity does not make people just relevant as far as heaven and kingdom things are concerned Christianity helps people to add value to mankind here and now. It says you are the light of this system. You give illumination and it says you are the salt of the earth. You preserve and you add taste. You add value. So the church is relevant. Even in society. We are not just relevant 
as far as speaking in tongues and falling down and getting up and this is one of the reasons why in many regions of this nation the church is not respected they are not seeing our socioeconomic impact they are not seeing us affect various strata of society hallelujah i think i did a teaching there conquering cosmos also you can get the teaching where i told us that the gospel is not just a message it's not just tract it's an ideology taking the value system of the kingdom to the various mountains of human existence education politics and governance finance um religion and media arts and so on and so forth you can get the teaching hallelujah so your ability to train your mind to build yourself and the ability to be free from worry and fear how many of you know that there are so many people they are blessed but they are afraid of their wealth because they are wondering what if i die all this kind of mental torture is not mental prosperity you can be rich financially and be poor mentally praise the lord bible says the lord has not given us the spirit of fear but of love of power and of a sound mind number three bodily prosperity we are not completely prosperous if we remain in sickness and weakness and so on and so forth to be prosperous health wise it means to be free from sickness to be free from diseases to be free from infirmity and then it also means to be free from yokes and oppressions of darkness all of these yokes curses all kinds of things that people inherit hallelujah you can be free from it and when you are free from that you are prosperous bodily the fourth one and that's going to be the subject of our discussion is financial prosperity say financial prosperity it means freedom from poverty freedom from lack there is a difference between poverty and lack and today we are going to see it hallelujah Poverty is a state of um, lack of productivity. There is nothing you are doing completely. And as a result of that, you do not have the ability to add value, whether by ignorance or demonic oppression or whatever it is. And then there is nothing that you can exchange for any kind of material um, blessing. But lack is a perpetual state of insufficiency, right? So someone who suffers lack, you have, but it's always not enough. Always. It's not like there is nothing. It's just always not enough. Hallelujah. So financial prosperity is freedom from poverty, freedom from lack, and take note, you must write this, and the effects that come with them. There is an effect that poverty does to the life. Listen. Listen. If poverty was neutral, there would be no need to attack the issue of poverty. Are you getting what I'm saying? That means if poverty did not cause anything to anybody, it did nothing just neutral like the air, we would not pay any attention to the issue of poverty. But we are, we are taking the issue of poverty personal because of what it causes to our lives, our families, the society and the advancement of the kingdom at large. Hallelujah. Praise God. It also means having abundant financial supplies. I'm giving you the definition of financial prosperity. Having abundant financial supplies alongside the means to replenish and sustain it. If you do not have a means to replenish and sustain, you are not rich. It doesn't matter what you have. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So it's not enough to have abundant financial supply. Anybody can dash you money. Are you getting me now? Any well-wisher can love you and dash you money. You can inherit wealth, for instance. But the ability to replenish it and sustain that flow is what makes you financially prosperous. Everything that was lost 
shall be returned unto us everything that was stolen shall be restored unto us we arise it's our time we arise it's our season everything that was lost shall be returned unto us everything that was stolen shall be restored unto us everything that was lost shall be returned unto us everything that was stolen shall be restored unto us we arise says arise and shine for your light is come tonight your light is coming in the name of jesus number five relational prosperity that's the last index for or dimension of prosperity in the kingdom. Having quality relationships that give you opportunities to express love, to express care, to improve yourself, to share and to impact lives. You must have an opportunity to bless people. You must have an opportunity to interact, to be a blessing to people. There are many people who are financially prosperous but relationally they are very poor. They walk alone. They have no friend. Nobody to bless. Nobody can say it's because of this person I was blessed today. Hallelujah. So that kind of money, that kind of blessing that at the end of the journey of your life, please bring some more people if there are more people they can just come and sit at least they can leave the front rows they can just share maybe a few of them or a few of you some of the leaders your leaders you can just go there so that some people can come to the front hallelujah few people who have the opportunity please come and sit down praise god how many of you lift please look at me how many of you have seen people who you know maybe in their lifetime maybe now they're in their old age they were blessed but they didn't lift anybody have you seen people like that they didn't bless anybody nobody went to school because of them they didn't feed anybody they didn't help the poor there are people like that and so maybe while they were working nobody got a job because of them they didn't bless anybody some of them were politicians their environments were not developed and these people come down and in their old age they are left alone because they did not invest in the life of anyone relational prosperity is so important because by and large in your life that's one of the things that will matter are you getting me there are some people who will never be poor in this life because of the those who have been raised and lifted because of them hallelujah for instance my children will never suffer in this life again you see that whatever price i've paid for them even if you hate me you will love them one day you will just look at them i'm sure maybe my daughter will be made head girl you know all this kind of solidarity whether she's qualified or not see there are you can create a a platform for generational blessings Look at what we inherited from our parents. Praise God. They didn't do anything. They just produced enemies. And you just got up and your uncle said, you are the son of who? You say, I'm the son of this person. You say, that's right. Because of something that happened when you were not there. That means relationships matter. Are you getting my message now? Your, your quality of relationship with... There are some things that you will get for free on account of relationship hallelujah some of us because of the relationships that we are making with certain people here now you may never need to pay for certain things in your life hallelujah praise the lord one day someone will come to a showroom to buy the car and maybe it's ken that is the owner of the showroom ah sam i remember you say come in the inner one not that one outside 
there is the inner one the holy the holy of holies and he says please pick anyone it's a seed it's been a while and sam is so blessed that when he takes it he will go back and deposit money in his account and say it's a seed so it's not a product of insufficiency there is a realm like that four people never know there is a realm like that but there is hallelujah so as you're sitting down right now i want you to imagine your two three four five children standing and saying daddy you better hear what they are saying we are coming <laughs> today is valentine love love means responsibility yeah. hallelujah don't ever let your children look at you one day and say what happened is it that you didn't hear what others were what happened and you know, we are preserving all these messages. In the future, they will play it and you will see yourself when you were small. Your child will see you and say, I thought you said you, you were not born again then. That's you there. Why are we still broke? You know, then our parents lied to us. Some of them said they took first all through. Some of them said all kinds of things. Eventually, we said, this, your story is not connecting. You know? Why are we still suffering like this? <laughs> parents... We're sorry. <laughs> Relational prosperity. Now look at me. For those of you who can choose to neglect quality relationships, I'm just, this is not a discussion, but I just feel it's important I point it because there are certain people that have this disdain and disregard for people. You're not as fine as me. You don't speak English as me. You are not doing this. I'm wearing a designer's. You are wearing something else. Praise the Lord. And we create all of this stratification. Tonight, God is speaking to you. This is your first message tonight. Repent quickly. Hallelujah. Because let me tell you something. That sister you see sitting down, she may have only one dress, but there is something happening inside her. The Bible says the vision in the end, it said, though it tarries, it will not speak at the beginning, but in the end, it will speak. This is why we, I respect and I honor people so much, including these children. Some of you just look at them and nod. No. Value relationships. Value relationships. Many of our parents are crying for help today and there's nobody to help them because they neglected everybody. Some of them were the only ones to go to school and they turned and looked at the illiterates and said, you are not my class. And then the tables turned. This life. Everybody has his shell. The Bible says time and chance is a mystery that happens to all men. So whether you take advantage of your opportunity or not, God is just to turn the table. And one day it will get to somebody you've been laughing at. And maybe when you met the person, the person was a drunkard. But by the time the table would have reached, you would be born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, with sufficient knowledge to take advantage of that opportunity. Value relationships. Some of you, you cannot keep friends for five, five days. You are fighting with everybody. You just believe everybody has a problem. And you won't adjust. Hallelujah. There are many of us that will not forgive people that hurt us since they were in secondary school. You just turn and you saw the person sitting in Koinonia and say, God, what is this person doing here? Because when you rise, see, if you don't believe in people when they are nothing, when they rise, they will forget about you too. Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness? Relationships. And they brought a crippled man who dash monkey banana? Who would take that crippled man to the, to the palace? Relationships. Everybody say relationships. Relationships can give you what money may not give you. There are people on account of relationships, they got jobs without interview. You've been seeing your roommate because they are humble. You don't know who their father is. You're just picking against everybody and feeling your this and that. And one day you may go to their house and find somebody there. That your own father has been trying to access his office. See, let me tell you, relationships are powerful. This is a very powerful message. I believe God just wants me to drop this right now. 
when I see old women and very old men, the question I ask is, where are their children? Two, where are their friends? Because they had an opportunity to take advantage of their youthful life. Are you following me now? Many of them did not take advantage of it. And a man, a man at 75, coming to move around in a house and say he wants to be a gate man. I said it last week. For 75 years, where were we, his friends? No, it's, it, it's impossible that all his friends will be failures. You mean nobody could help him? That is coming now to be a gate man to take five or ten thousand. I'm not insulting the occupation. Are you getting my point? I'm saying that there, there is always opportunity. Many of us now are begging for things we would get for free because we neglected people years ago that are in position to bless us now. There are many of us, maybe if you would have seen me 15 years ago or so, some of you will look and say all kinds of things no value people now especially when they are hearing what you are hearing too look let me tell you the word can give you an inheritance never conclude on any man who is getting revelation hallelujah praise the lord there are many wealthy people today there are people in the presidency there are multi bill gates had classmates true or false all of these wealthy people had classmates. Some of those classmates are still begging today. And Bill Gates makes overnight what some of them may never make in their lifetime. Is it that he's so greedy that he cannot bless them? They are giving millions to charity. Can they help their friends? Neglect. This is a message to someone this night. Today is Valentine's Day. Let me just press it in. Some of us have a habit of this disdain for people based on class or whatever parameters we have love people when you see us say turn around hug one another and all of this we're doing it for a reason we're doing it for a reason everybody say opportunity remember my message on activating breakthroughs the ministry of destiny help us cherish very valuable relationships I'm not saying just hop in and out of any sinner's life and say they said we should have relationship. No. The Bible says have no business with the unfruitful works of darkness. Unfruitful. That means it doesn't bear fruit. There are some relationships that bear fruit. Hallelujah. It doesn't mean the people have to be perfect. I'm not talking of love relationship now. I'm just talking of general relationship. The people may have their differences just like you have your own too. Correct? People are not working with us because we are perfect. There are some of you who hate me. It's just that you like what I represent to the body. And you are receiving it in peace. Praise the Lord. Value relationships. Write it. Write it so that even after 10 years, if you are looking at your note, you will see it. Value relationships. When you see people, greet them. Greet them. Don't say I'm a pastor of social so, so ministry. So what? Huh? Greet people. You get up in the morning, you pass people, good morning. Huh? Don't look and say, you know, when I was in, in, in SS3, that's when you were writing common entrance. So what? Let me tell you, if age used to give food, some of our parents would be resting by now. Relationships. Hallelujah right financial dominion what is financial dominion we defined it but let me define it again the ability to totally conquer lack to conquer poverty to conquer financial hardship alongside the effects that they bring is financial dominion financial dominion is the ability notice that word to totally when you understand that you find out that it's a journey for us the ability to totally conquer lack poverty financial hardship alongside the effects that they bring and let's see some of the effects that they bring fear 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 number two insecurity Many poor people are insecure. 
The Bible says money is a defense. It says a rich man's words are harsh because he believes he's defended. But a poor man uses entreaties, always begging, a life of begging. Greed. Many people are greedy because they have not attained that state of financial dominion. Greed. What if I give? Where would the money come from again? So someone can be dying and you can join people to say, ah, you are dying, what happened? Whereas you can rush the person to the hospital. But you are saying, me too, what I have is not much. Greed. Self-centeredness. Some of the effects that financial hardship brings. Self-centeredness. Many people are self-centered. And part of the reason, not all of the reason, but part of the reason is this life of insufficiency. Self-centered. They don't think about anybody, just me, myself. What I have is not much. You know if it was much, we would have shared. But now that it's more, please don't disturb me. I can pray for you. Self-centeredness. Unrighteousness. Unrighteousness. Many people have gotten into sinful and shameful things because of money. They've entered wrong relationships, wrong marriages. They have compromised, given themselves freely and cheaply. They've been involved in diabolic things, all kinds of things because of poverty. When you pay a man and say, go and kill another person and I will give you 100,000 or 200,000. That's terrible. Unrighteousness. Say in the name of Jesus. I will attain financial dominion and be free from all these things. Yeah. There are many people who live perpetually under fear. Will the landlord come and kick me out? And we live in a time when a landlord can escalate the price of his rent to twice or three in places like Abuja. And now a family is stranded and there's almost nothing they can do about it. Hallelujah. Tonight we are going to be looking at the anatomy of God's economic system. Mm. Grant us light, oh God. The anatomy of God's economic system. The internal workings. How does this thing work? Financial prosperity is not a mystery. It's not magic. There is a way this thing works. And tonight I pray that God will open our eyes to understand. Hallelujah. The anatomy of God's economic system. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Please let me have two people. I like using people for example. My brother, ah, you sat in front. Sitting in front means you have volunteered one here. hallelujah praise god now every time we examine anything any subject in the christian faith you must realize that oftentimes there are two dimensions there are two perspectives are you listening to me now there is the world's economic system everybody say the world's economic system that means the way that people in the world run their economy this world this system cosmos it has its economic system. The way people get money, the way people multiply it, the way people become rich, they have their system. But the kingdom of God also has an economic system. And if you are a citizen of the kingdom, then you should understand how the system of heaven works. The Bible gives us a picture of this. It said, lay, lay up for yourself treasures where? So he began to give us a picture that there is a heavenly system that interacts with the earth. That a man can be in the earth realm but he can make heavenly deposits. Are you getting my point now? This is Jesus speaking. Lay for yourself treasures. And he tells us the limitations of this world system. He said thieves can come. All kinds of things can go wrong. But there is a system that has another mode of operation 
And so tonight we want to examine this system. Everybody say heaven's economy. Say it again, heaven's economy. Many of you are shocked because we've not been taught in church. Either because we have been made to believe that when you teach people about prosperity, it is carnality. But by now I know that every one of us here hates poverty. Is that true? And we're not going to allow anybody just sit down and mislead us and make us believe that teaching about pr prosperity and the place of kingdom wealth is, is, is carnality. No, no, it's not at all. At all. There is a lot that the kingdom of God cannot, the, the advancement of the kingdom of God can be crippled when there is no finance. Hallelujah. So there are two economic systems. What's the first one? What's the first one? The world's economic system. And there is the second one. What is it? Hallelujah. Now, the fact that it is heaven's economy does not mean that it is not operational in this earth. Are you getting my point? Because this is where we are now. So we take the principles of the kingdom and we walk with it in this earth. And bless you, sir. Hallelujah. The anatomy of God's economic system. The first thing I want us to examine is the role of wealth and prosperity in the kingdom. Why does God bless? This is, this is one of the things you must understand when you are exploring the economy. Don't talk about money. Don't talk about business. Don't talk about all of these things. The first thing you need to know is why does God bless the believer? Why do we have to be blessed in the kingdom? What is the role of wealth and prosperity as far as kingdom advancement is concerned why does god bless us when a herbalist when a man goes to meet a herbalist and he says baba i want charm say for what say i want to be rich the man gives him conditions is that true he said remember why we are blessing you and here are the conditions the day you compromise that money disappears agreed agreed and the man goes back and then things begin to work for him. There is a system. So why does God bless us? Because if you do not know why God prospers people, you will misuse prosperity when it comes. Are, are you seeing why lots of people misuse prosperity? They don't know the purpose of prosperity in the kingdom. So they get money and do lots of crazy things. You know, I... I, I told you, I think it was last week. I don't know if I said it here or maybe during the final year or workers retreat, any one of them. Hallelujah. I watched a documentary how that the son of the Sultan of Brunel or so, I think one of these very wealthy billionaires. Hallelujah. His child, I think if I, if I remember rightly, about 22 years old. When he was celebrating his 22 year old birthday, the father gave him 250 million dollars as a birthday gift. The wealthiest man of God in Africa is worth about 190 million US dollars after years of operating this world. But now one son who clocked 22 years. Listen to me. I want to challenge you tonight. The father just gave him money and the boy didn't know 22 years from a rich family. Will he buy food in a restaurant? A man whose empire is built with gold. And the boy didn't know what to do so he went to go and rent a yacht. And he brought in half of Hollywood stars. Half. Praise the Lord. Half. Just to come and enjoy drink beer, waste away, become soul hunters. And he wanted to become friends with a popular, one of these secular musicians. And he knew that going to go and meet him the way a poor man, a poor man uses entreaties. And he knew that that way would not work. So they measured his size and he made a shoe for the musician made of diamonds and presented it as an offer to become his friend. Do you think it will work? At once. At once. It worked at once. Now listen. 
That's a lot of money spent on vanity. And the truth is, compared to the about maybe 16 billion or thereabout that his father had, that's a chicken change. That's pocket money. Are you getting what I'm saying? Don't just start fantasizing because this is the world system. There are, of course, any man that does not give his life to Christ, no matter what you have in this world, you are not advancing the cause of the kingdom, you must be advancing another cause. Everybody's advancing something. Whether you know it or not. Are you getting my point? So why does God bless us? Never forget this in your journey to financial freedom and financial dominion. The day you forget it, God is not entitled to bless you. Please follow me. Because the rules that govern kingdom wealth are very strict. Your violation of them will cost you so much. Number one. The role of wealth and prosperity in the kingdom. Why God blesses us. Number one. To live a comfortable life. I shared this during the Kingdom Wealth Summit in 2010. Number one. To live a comfortable life. That's one of the reasons why God blesses us in the kingdom. Let me say it again. God is not glorified in our poverty. Say it after me. God is not glorified when I'm poor. Say it one more time. God is not glorified when I'm poor. Now say God desires that I prosper and live a comfortable life. Say it one more time. God desires that I prosper and live a comfortable life brothers and sisters there is nothing wrong that you own a house that has a worship room with sound system all around that is automated that wakes you up in worship and a door that recites a scripture before opening is not vanity don't just clap oh. many clapped many clapped like this this is not to make you fantasize what is wrong with just sitting down and having options and saying in the next two weeks i don't want to eat this food and not feel guilty and not feel bad hallelujah what is wrong with being able to live a comfortable life and send your children to good schools good schools with very good standard Hallelujah. There's nothing wrong. Living a very comfortable life. You sleep in peace. You wake up in peace. God wants us to live a comfortable life. Now many of us have not had the experience of that comfort. Maybe just a few of us. But I'm telling you, God wants you to be comfortable. Say, God wants me to be comfortable. I want you to believe it. No matter how you have suffered, say, it. God wants me to be comfortable. You know, some of us have suffered so much as you are saying it, you are saying, ah, God, God wants you to be comfortable. Hallelujah. Because when you are comfortable, let me tell you one of the greatest benefits of prosperity. It gives you options. It gives you the ability to choose. Hallelujah. Poor people never have the opportunity to choose. Whatever comes, they go with it. Hallelujah. It gives you options. You can choose. And in that choosing, you will now choose according to the way of the Lord. Praise the Lord. So to live a comfortable life. Number two. This is very important. Why does God bless us in the kingdom? To finance the cause of Christ on the earth. To finance the cause of Christ. To advance the kingdom. Never forget this. This is one of the reasons why God, one of the major reasons as a matter of fact, why God blesses men in the kingdom. The world may have their system of operation, but when you are a kingdom citizen, if you want to be open to the prosperity of God and to command financial dominion, then you must understand that one of the major reasons why God blesses us in the kingdom is to advance the cause of Christ. What is the cause of Christ? Soul winning. To build the house of God. To 
finance the kingdom finance soul winning bless the lives of of the vessels that he's using to increase and improve people to better the lives of people hallelujah very important now i wrote something here and i want you to write it it's god's plan for every believer to be part of providing financial supplies for kingdom activities i'll say it again it is god's plan for every believer to be a part of providing financial supplies for kingdom activities this is so important i know that there are kingdom financiers those who are called and anointed into this apostolic ministry of providing major financial supplies for kingdom activities but can i tell you part of every believer's responsibility is to contribute financially among other reasons in the building of the kingdom say amen if you believe that so financial dominion is not a wish i told you it's a it's a principle it's a path it has a formula if you can walk with it then god will honor you otherwise you are not entitled as simple as that you may not go to hell but you are certainly not going to be eligible it is god's plan for every believer is god's desire for everyone seated and hearing me and even for the online community is god's desire for everyone to be part of advancing the kingdom listen we are still going to discuss other sections but you must come to a point in your life where out of every resource god gives you there must be something in it that goes for the kingdom it's not just a special um a, on, until you are prompted and all of that that it is part of your life that you're going to provide financial supplies for the kingdom it is very very important hallelujah that's the second reason the third reason why god blesses us in the kingdom is to reveal the love of god to a dying world in a practical way to reveal the love of god and god so loved the world that he that you must give your love expression in this dying world to reveal the love of god to a dying world in a very practical way to help the poor to help the hungry to be committed in charity to be committed in community projects and nation building all of these things are part of the reason why god blesses us in the kingdom that means god's blessings is not just limited to the house of god first the house of god but also to give the world an opportunity to see that god is love i wrote here acts of love and kindness that moves beyond religion beyond culture beyond gender and beyond social status when you come and build a school for a community for instance and you say everyone in this community will pay the teachers for 10 years teach these children whether you know them or not that's revealing the love of god when there are all kinds of charity activities and you bless people you help the needy you provide for the poor the bible says he that gives to the poor lends to the lord how do you borrow a rich man money hallelujah let me tell you something how many of you have seen maybe one of your uncle that is very very rich and maybe at a point he needs one thousand now and he said please give me one thousand will you give him very quick step who knows maybe as he's giving you back he won't give you that same one thousand so when a rich man says please borrow me very quickly say I, I have he said no no let me just say mm, it's my own i have because you know that when he's giving you back you will say ah uh -uh, you out of this abundance so let's just take this one and you just look and you see that it has multiplied ridiculously so the bible says when you give to the poor is the same thing as God saying, borrow me money. I will return it to you. Ah, I will do. Goodness. 
God, every rich man blesses according to his ability. That means he first looks at his ability. And from that revelation, he will bless you. So the Bible says, my God, this is Paul speaking, shall supply all your needs according to his riches. Praise the Lord. These are the three major reasons in the kingdom why God blesses us. Let's review it quickly. Number one, to live a comfortable life. Number two, to advance or to finance the cause of, the, of Christ on earth. Use the word advance, not finance. Advance. Advance. The financing is to bring that advancement. I will build my church. He says, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Praise the Lord. When it was time for him to build the temple, they called on people and from the abundance that they brought, the tabernacle was built. Do you know? Listen, let me prove this thing to you um, scripturally. The Bible says when Israel was about to leave Egypt, God made Egypt to give them money. That was the first wealth transfer we see in the Bible. Are you following me now? This, we are going to come to the issue of wealth transfer. So we see the first wealth transfer in scripture. That overnight, someone who had oppressed people for 430 years, he gave them money. But many of them did not know. He gave them sheep and oxen so that it can sponsor their journey. Are you following me? That journey is like the journey of the believer to the promised land now. So financial resources were given. But because they did not know why God blessed them, later on he would demand of them that they bring from that resource. Because they did not know, they used the money to build an idol the gold and everything eventually they built an idol that's what a lot of people are doing every time you do not know why god blesses you will build an idol with it are you following me please this is a very important teaching i want you to pay rapt attention so god blesses you so that you can advance the course of the kingdom. Wealth in the kingdom is not an achievement. It's a trust. Never forget this. Wealth in the kingdom. Wealth in the kingdom is not an achievement. It's not an accomplishment. You satisfy these rules and God trusts you with it. Please understand. That's why there is no boasting. Any rich man in the kingdom that brags unnecessarily does not understand the operation of the kingdom fully. Trust. And he gave unto one. Please come. Three of you. Look at me. The Bible says, he gave unto one what? Five talents. Did they beg him for it? He gave them. He gave them. He gave them. According to their several abilities. Right? After a while, he came back and demanded accountability. Write this word down. Stewardship. Please sit down. Write this word down. Stewardship. This is, this, is, this is a word that you must never forget if you want to be blessed in the kingdom. There are no owners of prosperity as it were. Financial prosperity. No. No. There are stewards that God commits wealth to for their personal blessing and to be a blessing. The day you stop being a steward, you are not entitled to the wealth of the kingdom. Everybody say, I am a steward. What does it mean to be a steward? A caretaker. A caretaker. That means your greatest pursuit in the kingdom is to become trustworthy worthy enough that God can recommend you and can trust you there are some people who will never be rich no matter how much they pray and fast even if they enter one gallon of anointing oil and come out you know why they are not trustworthy in this day and age let me tell you in this prophetic season of authentic wealth transfer god is looking for distribution channels god is looking for houses men he can trust 
that you say lord you know i i told god something i said lord i know that many people have given in the kingdom but i want you to trust me and see what i will do for your kingdom and i mean it i'm disabusing many of our mindsets right now about prosperity because there are many of us that until now all we are thinking about is just ourselves let me make quick money hammer sharp sharp marry one lady quickly have children build a house enjoy my life and go back to the village by december and say all you suffering ones how far god has been faithful if that is your mindset forget about kingdom wealth forget about kingdom wealth that you know that lord i'm a distribution center trust me trust me with insight trust me with resources trust me with capacity he gave out of trust he gave one five talent that means he saw that the one with five talent was the one who could manage it well then the one with two and the one with one and after a while his point was proven to be correct because the one with one talent didn't do anything with it the one with ten multiplied it and it collected you see I said something years ago and I was accused of it. I said in this wealth transfer, there are believers who their wealth will also be transferred. Those who do not understand and recognize that the purpose of wealth is to build the house of God. In this country, there are believers with houses, estates, and there is nothing they are doing for the kingdom. They are not doing anything for the kingdom only to get angry and talk fly around a church is saying we have a convention and maybe the total cost for the convention is maybe three or four million and that man is paying business class 2.5 right first class 2.5 and in one week he would travel four or five countries spend more than 10 or 15 million and come back and sit in the church and just keep watching when you do not take up kingdom responsibility you will never be trusted with the wealth of the kingdom are you are you getting something right now greed self-centeredness is an enemy to financial dominion are you getting blessed many of us do not know that we are the ones who are stopping God from being a great blessing for us and to us because of our greed we are self-centered there is nothing the kingdom I can never go to a place and not find a way of participating financially in the advancement of the kingdom there are many of us here where there is nothing you have done for the kingdom I'm not talking about offering offering is, is because we were religiously raised to believe that you come to church with something do you have the kingdom at heart david sat down and thought to himself he said how can i be in a royal palace made of gold there is nothing i want and my god does not have a place he said although you you are in heaven the earth is your footstool you do not need a house but me I must build you a house. The tabernacle of God cannot be outside and a multi-millionaire is inside. There are many men of God living in houses that are worth hundreds of billions and the carpet in their church, the carpet in their church that is 20,000 cannot be changed. Don't tell me you have passion for the kingdom. Are you understanding what I'm saying? A man will buy a car of 14 million pastor and a church is struggling with rent how much is the rent Five hundred thousand. what is it to just come and slip it in and say pastor i am a kingdom citizen i may not be a member of this church but i know why god blesses me quietly without chorusing around create a special chair for me close to the pastor are you an elder no are you a pastor no who are you i gave five hundred thousand. let me show you why many people so that when you see a man that god is blessing don't be angry there is a price they have paid and it has nothing to do with age it has nothing to do with gender are you understanding what i'm saying this is a reorientation 
were in the school of prosperity examining how the internal workings of the blessings of the kingdom notice i've not mentioned anything business i've not mentioned anything money self i've not mentioned entrepreneurship because that's what many people this is the problem i have with a lot of success and business people they just by cut every of these things and they tell people open a shop look for fifty thousand or hundred thousand and it will work you think it works like that we will shout for your glory with everything with everything we will shout for your praise so what is your heart for god lord i want you to bless me god is saying really do you understand my conditions listen brothers and sisters let me shock you prosperity does not just respond to prayer alone there are many people who believe that just by praying, uh -uh, your heart is a great issue that must be examined. There are so many people who are so greedy. Every time they talk about money, let me show you something. Read Psalms 122 in NIV. Can we get NIV? Psalm 122 verse 9. I found this scripture years ago and it, it hit my spirit. I said, goodness, my God. Psalms 122. Last verse. Verse 9 in NIV. Is somebody getting blessed tonight? God is challenging us in this place because he wants to bless us. I prophesy to you is your season. In the name of Jesus what kept your family members will not keep you there are some of us this is the prayer that our parents have been praying for years and say lord will a savior not arise will a savior not arise is this how we will die will a savior not arise many of us have prayed and fasted because of the things happening in our families the lord brings salvation for us in the name of jesus christ while they prepare to, to pull that up, I want you to understand that every time God increases you and your heart tends towards wickedness, he can withdraw the, the blessings. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why after 20 years, a man can be blessed, but after 20 years, he can be so reduced and even be begging. Hallelujah. Everybody read Psalms 122 verse 9 want to read for the sake of the house of the lord our god i will seek your prosperity is that in your bible that means lord i'm not just seeking all these millions and billions how many cars can you enter at once even if you have 50 cars you can't pieces your body to drop in different cars you can only enter one is that true so if it's just for yourself you just need a cash flow of a few hundreds of thousands and it will do you. No matter how extravagant you are. But for the sake of the house of the Lord, I will seek your prosperity. Lord, I'm seeking these billions. I'm seeking these thousands so that you can sponsor a TV program for 10 years quietly and say, man of God, stop thinking about money. You concentrate on praying. Look at how many struggling ministers with an authentic message from God. But there is no voice given to them. Hallelujah. Because of prosperity. Because of your house, I will seek your prosperity. What do you need one billion for as a person? Bill Gates is living off 5% of his wealth and he's still a billionaire. He's giving 95% of the wealth to Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Yet with the 5 billion, he's still a billionaire. Do you know why God searched around the body of Christ and did not find many worthy believers and he chose to use cyrus's until the believers are prepared there is no not there's none on record that i know there is no man of god or minister of the gospel that i know who is a billionaire in dollars not one 
The closest is Kenneth, Kenneth Copeland. The only person that I can say has gotten there, he's not exactly a man of God, is Peter J. Daniels. The man with the largest real estate company in Australia. What is the problem? We are here shouting massive kingdom wealth transfer and there is nobody. God TV. God TV. Hallelujah. God TV. They are looking for about 6 to 10 million dollars to complete a project for the house of God. Look at the people who have been blessed. 6 to 10 million. Brothers and sisters, are there no people on earth that can give a prostitute 10 million for one night? Dollars. I'm not talking of Naira. And it does not shake them. All these rich men go for extravagant outings and buy one wine. One. One wine. About maybe 10 or 20 or 50 thousand dollars. One wine. And they will order cartons of it. And believers are here begging, please. Begging. Psalm 22 verse 5. Give 22 dollars, 5 cents. All these kinds of suffering. Something is wrong. It's not, listen. We are not mocking them. But I believe that our generation will do something that has not been seen. You better believe it. I believe strongly that this generation will do something. We are truly this omega generation that will do something that will keep the world at a standstill. And they will see how we are so separated from the blessing. Are you getting blessed? Forbes 100 billionaires. The top 100 people in the whole world. There are just about maybe five or six people who are professing believers and that's the walton family sam walton and all the other people most of the other people are atheists heterogeneous religions coming from wherever where is the church in this members of the illuminati and all of this and all of that there is poverty in the body of christ even what we celebrate that has turned the head of some people let me tell you, that's not prosperity. It will be shadows compared to that which is coming. Believe me, it will happen. It's part of the prophecies that must happen before Christ comes. And I will shake the heavens. And I will shake the earth. And the desires of nations will come. The silver is mine. The gold is mine, said the Lord. Hallelujah. There will be a shaking. This is what is happening. The global recession is a shaking. So God is positioning us. Don't ever belittle yourself. We live in a world where every time we are talking like this, you say there are other people. Do you know what God can do with you? He told Gideon, you are a mighty man. Oh, thou mighty man of valor. Hallelujah. Are you learning something? Let me show you what God does. Every time there is perpetual misuse, perpetual misuse of his blessings. Hosea chapter 4. Verse 7. Is someone getting blessed tonight? You will thank God for this truth that you are hearing. Blessed are the ears that are hearing this. Don't trivialize it at all. Hallelujah. Everybody read. Want to read. As they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore, I will change their glory into shame. This is why after 30 years, a man that probably, listen, there are some things that are not caused by demons. It's how God's technology works. Hallelujah. Solomon came to a point where he said everything in the book of Ecclesiastes, everything that my eyes saw, I desired. Everything. That in such, that insatiable lust for just everything. Money is a wild animal. It can tear you into pieces. If you don't control it that's why the bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them hallelujah people make all kinds of nasty statements people say all kinds of things because they believe they have money they can hire police they can do all kinds of things praise the lord i want you to know that this is the reason why God blesses us. Never forget. Every time you get money, just know that this is why God has blessed me. There is a portion of this that is for me. There is a portion of this that is for the kingdom. 
Hallelujah. If you understand this, you're already in, in a very great, a, a landslide uh, progression towards financial prosperity. Spiritual laws of wealth and abundance. Now, please pay attention. We'll start talking about the laws now. We've seen why God blesses us. We want to see how he blesses us. Spiritual laws. Remember in our course curriculum, when I read it for you last week. Sorry for those who didn't come last week. We, we read out a course curriculum. Just, just follow. We're really sorry. I forgot to read it. Spiritual laws of wealth and abundance. Even so, come Yeshua, come. And even so, come take your bride away. Take us into new realms, oh God. How my soul longs to see your face, my Lord. Even so, even so, come Yeshua, come. What are the laws? There are spiritual laws, brothers and sisters, that govern the manifestation of wealth in the kingdom. Every herbalist, look at me. If you see this brother today, come my brother. If by next week, Koinonia, this guy just comes with a what? Range Rover Sports, maybe. Or whatever it is, just just keep that one. Let's let's hurry up. Praise God. And he brings a car, and he just comes with some kind of regalia and everything. You can just look at him and say, "My brother, in one week, where did you go to?" You won't ask him what he did. You say, "Where did you go to?" Somehow we associate wealth with the spirit realm. Once you see a man that mysteriously rose up to wealth, they say, "No way, leave this guy's money." this guy went somewhere not he did something he went somewhere so we and that somewhere in our mind is that he went to a herbalist or a shrine is that true so if you believe that consulting a herbalist can make you rich it tells you that there are spiritual laws hallelujah bless you deuteronomy 28 verse 1 please deuteronomy 28 verse 1 this was a condition for prosperity and it shall come to pass if thou will hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to do what? observe and do there is something to do there are laws to live by it's not automatic it's not the issue of receive prosperity there is a dimension where prayer comes in but I want you to know that there are laws. Everybody say there are laws that govern wealth and abundance in the kingdom. Say one more time. There are laws that govern wealth and abundance in the kingdom. Let me tell you, if you do not know these laws, I don't care whether you have, you have PhD in finance and economics. You will struggle eventually in your life and you will not experience true prosperity. There are many people who believe that all it takes is just go to school, go and get a job, do this and that. Wonderful. We'll still talk about that. But let me tell you, prosperity in the kingdom first starts by your compliance to spiritual laws. Just thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Say spiritual laws. Oh, there are laws. There are laws. Just like there is the law of gravity. Whether you believe it or not, it's there. If per adventure you climb a building and try to fall, that's when you will know that there is a law. Hallelujah. There are spiritual laws. The first spiritual law is the law of tithing. The law of tithing. Leviticus 27, verse 30. Leviticus, excuse me, 27 verse 30. 
Everyone, please, can we read? One, two, read. It is the Lord's and it is holy unto God. How many of the tithe? All the tithe. It says all the tithe of the land. Your tithe. What is your tithe? The word tithe comes from the word a tenth. It is a tenth. Ten percent of your income. Please write. Ten percent of whatever blessing God br brings to your life. Now because we operate an economy that has to do with finance, money, currency. Because of currency now, we no longer carry bags of rice on our head to come and drop and just say, this is my tithe and all of that. Hallelujah. The Jews were an agrarian people and because of that, that was why all of these things were written. But for us now, it's just your finances because it represents your highest value and sacrifice in terms of your physical impute and the reward you get from it. 10%. Hallelujah. Now listen, I'm going to say something that sounds very controversial. There are people who preach that you should give 30%, stretch your faith and give 30% and 40%. Because it is money, nobody will refuse it. But that's not... The Bible says obedience is better than... There are other opportunities to sow into the kingdom. Call tight what it is. Are you getting my point? Now, there are a few times where God gave certain people customized instructions that were, were just a product of their relationship with God. You cannot carry your personal experience and lord it over people. Are you getting my point now? There are churches that they make people bring 50%, 100%, bring everything and say, um, there is first fruit. There are lots of other things. We'll discuss it. Your tithe is 10%. You can give the 10% and give every other thing. There are many avenues. We're going to discuss that. But listen, I'm telling you now, your tithe is your 10%. There is a reason why God said 10. He would have said 2 or you would have said 21 to 50 percent is your tithe. Choose anyone. It, God is very meticulous and He's exact. 10 percent is your tithe. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Malachi chapter 3, from verse 8 to 12. Another word for the law of tithing is the law of open heavens, it's the spiritual law, one of the spiritual law that is responsible for opening your heavens, not just financially, but even financially. Somebody is changing tonight in the name of Jesus. The law of open heavens. Malachi chapter 3 from verse 8. Will a man rob God? Question. Answer it. Answer it for yourself. Will a man rob God? It's an encouragement. It was a question but use it now to challenge yourself. Hallelujah. Put your name there where a man is. One to go. Will Joshua Selman rob God? Some of you, as you are saying it, God is saying, you see, this is what has been happening. There are many robbers of God in the house of God. Many robbers of God. And please listen. Some of you hear this and you think it's some gimmicks by pastors to collect your money. Let me say something. Everybody is an authority somewhere. Are you getting what I'm saying? A professor is an authority in his field. Not everywhere. Don't listen to garbages by intellectuals. They are not spiritual people. They don't know how heaven's economy works. You cannot go and meet a man who is not a spiritual man. And you are telling him to help you analyze the principles of the kingdom. The Bible says the natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit. It doesn't add up to them. There are many people because a man is sound intellectually does not mean he has spiritual understanding. There are many politicians, many people who insult pastors, genuine men of God and say all kinds of things because they think that because they have political knowledge, it means they have spiritual knowledge and they take politics. Get out! Leave us in the house of God. We stay with God day and night and we understand this is our area of grace. Let us function. 
don't let any politician just come in and all kinds of people who are misleading people in the body of Christ being manipulated by demons and stopping people from entering their breakthrough I know that there are abuses here and there but let me tell you the truth any man that is not faithful in tithing is scripturally entitled to poverty scripturally the Bible says he that breaks the hedge the serpent is permitted on legal grounds to strike are you listening to me please so beware there are people who all they do spiritually is they analyze they downgrade spiritual things and just look at it from an intellectual plane and when they add one plus one and they don't know how it will become seven they say it's wrong it may not be wrong just say you do not understand hallelujah are you getting blessed and there are many of us especially some of us as young as we are we have already imbibed this religious mindset to scrutinize and criticize everything we don't understand we bring it into our religious mold and once we find out that it doesn't add up rather than with all humility seeking to understand hallelujah the bible says the wise men saw the star is that true when they saw the star, they knew that this star was spectacular. It was leading them somewhere. They didn't have sufficient knowledge to understand what it meant. But with all humility, they followed the light. And that light brought them to Jesus. There are many people who need to humble themselves. The recession has humbled a lot of arrogant people who laugh and scorn at the church. Let me tell you, individuals may fail. But the church of God as an entity is progressing. It cannot fail. Because Christ is the head of that body. Hallelujah. The law of tithing. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed you? This is where you have robbed God. In tithes and offerings. Verse 9. This is a consequence. This one is not the cause of the law. This one is the cause of disobedience. Are you getting my point now? Ye are cursed with a curse. For ye have robbed me even this whole nation. Verse 10. Bring ye how many? All the tithes into my storehouse. That there may be meat in my house. So God wants that there be abundance. That there may be resources to carry out activities in my house. And God says, if you have done your own part, prove me and see the things I'll begin to do in your life. Number one, if I will not open to you the windows of heaven. Hallelujah. Number two, if I will not pour you out a blessing. Number three. Okay, a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Verse 11. Number 3, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Number 4, he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Your ground is anywhere you sow. It could be your job. It could be your marriage. It could be whatever it is that you're doing. It says, and he. So that devourer is not a thing. It's a spirit. It's a living being. And he, that devourer, shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast its young before its time. There are lots of people with all kinds of premature happenings in their lives. Things that you know, this one is the signature of the devourer. Thus said the Lord, verse 12. And all nations shall testify... They will call you the blessed of the Lord. He said, for you shall be a delightsome, a well-desired land. Seven prophetic blessings for being faithful in just one law. One of the laws. Is somebody getting blessed tonight? You must make up your mind. Open your eyes tonight, brothers and sisters. And see where the devil has been robbing you. Of your financial prosperity. The first thing that happens. Is that many believers say. If I give. Where will I get another one? Question. How did the first one come? Your tithing. 
is a proof of trust. Hallelujah. If you cannot bring out 10% of your money and say, Lord, I trust you. I come because I love you and I come because I know that your word is true. If you're not a faithful tither, don't get angry at God. Many of our parents get angry. Maybe they are collecting two or 300,000 or 400,000 and they look 40,000 to go and give a pastor are we stupid like that? Don't turn our head. This is a problem. They think they are giving a pastor. They think they are giving the man of God. Are you getting my point now? What you do not know, listen. The Bible says, if you do this to the least of my people, you have done it unto me. When you come and give in the house of God, please listen to me. If you give tithe that is for the house of God and the man of God eats the tithe, it's between him and God. God, God will not hold you accountable for it. You have done your own part. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Oh, but there is faithfulness. The, the, the rewards of faithfulness are endless. There are many of our parents struggling. They've been trying to build one house for 10 years, 20 years. When the house is almost completed, somebody will do something from the village, everything will be destroyed again. The moment, have you seen families like that? The moment money enters, everybody gets sick until the last time finishes, then everybody will be fine by themselves. That's the devourer. Brothers and sisters, that's the devourer. There is a place that your tithe pays or there's a role that it plays in the kingdom. You can choose to believe what I'm saying. Hallelujah. Could it be that many of us have been robbed of entering these dimensions of blessings? Some of us go and tell our parents these things in love. There are some of us here that are parents. We have children. We've not been practicing the law of tithing. I want you to know that this is one of the irrefutable spiritual laws. Even unbelievers give 10%. They don't call it tight. But almost all the multi-million and multi-billion corporations dedicate at least 10% of their money and they say it's for charity. Are you following me now? If a believer plants during dry season, there is every tendency that you still suffer, although he's a believer. Is that true? If an arm robber comes to plant during rainy season, the rain will come because he aligned with the season and the principles that agriculture brings. This is how lots of unbelievers, they are interplaying kingdom principles and it's working for them. Tonight, God is giving you an opportunity to make a decision. Hallelujah. We are still going to continue, but while you are seated, in the next two minutes, I want you to pray and say, Lord, grace. I've not been a faithful tighter. Don't bow your head. Pray. Pray. Open your mouth and pray. There are many of us, some of you outside, wherever you are, please, this is, the, this is a serious business. Your children, this, this adherence to these laws will determine whether 10 years from now, 5 years from now, you will be part of those crying together with your children or you will break certain cycles in your family. Some of us, as you are hearing this right now, you may be young, but God is counting on you to break some chains. Enough is enough. Pay the price now. Pay the price now. Lift your voice and pray. And say, Lord, grace. Say, Kata, ba, 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 ba. I have robbed you and I am sorry. I take responsibility, oh God. Many of us have, have yielded to fear. You are not supposed to, to bring your tithe because you are afraid. God is a loving God. He said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. They are thoughts of good and not of evil. How can God rob you? God is no man's debtor. God does not rob men. Please lift your voice and pray. Cry for grace. Grace, oh God. From today I make up my mind that I will be a faithful tighter. Not out of fear. Not out of religion. 
but out of revelation I see that this is a key I will teach my children how to tithe I will teach my workers how to tithe I will teach my family members to tithe I will guide them and help them to be faithful in tithing so that the heavens will be open no power in existence will stop the law of tithing if you insist and say Lord I'm ready to comply God is more than able before you begin to abuse God and insult him and say he's not helping my family I'm opening your eyes tonight to see the loopholes business without tithing will end up in failure ministry without tithing will end up in failure a corporation without tithing a, a non-tithing family uh, they are entitled to financial hardship thank you jesus look up praise the lord let me say a few more things on titan listen if you are a business owner here i want you to know that tithing does not just apply to a person hallelujah when abraham went to go and rescue lot right when he came back with all of the blessings he was not only him he was representing many people the bible says in genesis 14 that when he came back he took a tenth of everything and brought it to melchizedek and the bible says melchizedek blessed him and said blessed be abraham son of the most high possessor of the heavens and the earth and his destiny opened up the great abraham hallelujah by the grace of god we do not owe god one naira as a ministry in tithing the finance department there is a standard rule in this place before we do anything with finance the tithe comes out when we started the school of ministry and missions even that no matter what we are raising money for in koinonia the tithe must go to god are you understanding this so don't just think that these are things we are just saying you must make up your mind if you cannot commit to god your 10 percent then it means you do not trust that he's able to bless and multiply you you want to be a billionaire you know what is the tithe of one billion 100 million you think you can carry 100 million and just go and give like that we are going to pray when we are done one of the graces that we must receive is the giving grace hallelujah the giving grace the giving grace there are many people that do not have if you don't have it is not human to carry money like this and take to the house of god and just go and drop no there is a grace that was the grace that was upon the macedonian church that they gave even beyond their limits it's called the giving grace many of us do not have it we are too greedy everything that enters your hand you spend it on every kind of thing sickness disease any other thing but god hallelujah your tithe what is the storehouse very quickly let's clarify the issue of this storehouse once and for all what is the storehouse because the bible says bring the tithe where to the storehouse the house of god so what is the storehouse really in scripture there are three places that qualify to be called the storehouse number one God's first idea of a storehouse from the Bible is the primary place where you receive your spiritual nourishment are you getting me the place where you receive your greatest spiritual nourishment for many people is their local assemblies because you know they are there they are committed they are workers in the church and then they are giving number one the primary place where you receive your spiritual nourishment anywhere you receive your primary spiritual nourishment primary there means the major spiritual nourishment that is building your life that becomes the storehouse number two 
it could be a ministry not necessarily your ministry but a ministry that is committed to the works of the kingdom please get this a ministry that is committed genuinely to the works of the kingdom there are people for instance that so in they are tied into maybe benihin ministry kenneth copeland ministry and it's not their local assembly as it were are you getting my point now but it's a ministry that they believe their vision and they are given into soul winning building and equipping believers listen if you pay your tithe to a dead place where the activities of the kingdom are not happening it can affect your harvest it's in the bible it's the same thing as a farmer carrying a seed and going to throw around in a soil that is non-productive the, the seed will not produce not because it is not good but a poor soil killed it number three now and these ones are they are special situations but i'm going to talk to you the vessel or the storehouse can also be an individual a man of god listen please I want you to listen very well so that you don't confuse what i'm saying a, it can be a man of god a vessel the bible says know ye not that your body is the temple of the holy spirit but there are conditions are you getting me now there are ministries that the spiritual fathers or spiritual leaders in the lord are you getting me i'll give you an instance like bishop oyedeko for instance he is the president of a ministry aside from the tithe of the ministry he has his own ministry are you getting me now so they can they take this time they don't just go maybe to redeem or kenneth copeland that vessel that they are drinking from on behalf of the people are you getting my condition now and they honor them with their tithe and they speak blessings abraham went to who melchizedek melchizedek was not a city he was a man and he brought his tithe to melchizedek and melchizedek pronounced a blessing upon him hallelujah there are lots of ministries for instance around that by the grace of god look up to us in ways for spiritual direction and they've committed themselves they come and they tighten koinonia here i don't even know this is what they are doing are you getting me but i'm saying whether of these three there are special conditions for the third to occur because there are many men of god who just sit down and somebody in church just corner a few people and say i qualify to be the storehouse come and bless i've explained to you that the condition where a person can be a storehouse but the house of god is where you must bless is somebody getting blessed these are the benefits the first law thank you jesus wow let me touch on one more law and then we'll round up this night next week we'll talk about the natural laws and we'll talk about wealth creation the principle the second law is the law of seed time and harvest the law of increase the law of giving Luke 6 38 Luke 6 38 Zema katala makuria damalana makuria everybody read one to read give and it shall be given unto you good measure pressed down shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom for with the same measure that he met without it shall be measured unto you again this is a spiritual law genesis 8 22 please when noah came out of the ark the bible tells us that he took seven unclean animals and two clean animals is that true that those are the that's how the animals enter the ark seven of the unclean two of the clean so when he came out the bible says he offered two two of every animal that means he offered and finished all the clean animals how they came back is a technology we must still find out in the bible while the earth remained verse 21 21 please let's start from 21 And the Lord smelled a sweet savour. This was Noah's sacrifice. And the Lord said in his heart, 
I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite anymore every living thing as I have done. 22. While the earth... That means this is a law that is valid for as long as the earth remains. Seed time and harvest. Cold and heat. God joined it with other laws so you can verify if it's still working. Cold and heat. Summer and winter. Day and night shall not cease. Has cold and heat stop? Has summer and winter stop? Has day and night stop? Then it tells you the law of seed time and harvest is still at work. Are you getting me? The day these three stop, that day know the law of seed time and harvest has stopped. But from the day they gave birth to you till today, the sun still rises, sets according to our perspective here. There is still cold and there is winter. That means the law of seed time and harvest is still at work. Very, very important. What is the law of seed time and harvest really? What is it? Simply put, the law of giving is a law that this earth please listen very very important this earth functions by giving and receiving that whatever it is that you give there is a technology that is able to multiply whatever you give and return it to you now i'm not talking about money when you give love you are practicing the law of seed time and harvest according to the law of god love will be multiplied and it will come back to you are you getting me when you sow seeds of kindness kindness will be multiplied and it will come to you are you getting what i'm saying that means whatever kind of harvest you want to see in your life you sow the seeds for that harvest oh this is so important this is not seed faith i'm going to teach you on seed faith we'll come to seed faith I'm teaching you the general law of seed time and harvest often called the law of sowing and reaping be not deceived God cannot be mocked whatsoever a man sows that shall he reap if you sow to the flesh you reap to the flesh those who live by the sword they have sown that seed they will die by the sword are you getting what I'm saying this is a very powerful law. That means everything that leaves my hand does not leave my destiny. Everything that leaves my hand goes an, as an investment into my future. And the Bible says it will find a way of multiplying and coming back to me. That means for all the givings you have done truly, if you have not received the harvest, God cannot lie. Expect it. It is coming. Are you following me now very very important now there are many kinds of givings and offerings that come under this law let's run number one is offering in the house of god what you call offering the seeds that you sow when you go to the house of god what you call offering that's one way to practice the law of seed time and harvest deuteronomy 16 16 please let's rush so we have to pray our time is gone offerings that you bring to the house of God Deuteronomy 16 16 three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose hallelujah it says in the feast of unleavened bread and in the feast of weeks and in the feast of tabernacle and they shall not appear before the lord empty hallelujah there is an admonition in scripture that every time you are coming to appear before the lord in the house of god as much as god has blessed you you should not come to the house of god empty-handed there is a blessing that follows your offerings and your givings in the house of God. Please never give just because it's offering time. 
and now you don't want to feel bad there are lots of people that come to the body of christ they come to the house of god without a predetermination they just come and they say offering time and i know it's not easy to just plan but you can train yourself hallelujah and part of your preparation for coming to church is that this is an offering that i'm bringing for god so that when it's offering time you're not just looking 100 naira you return it 50 you return it 20 naira even the 20 you return the new one and carry one and say oh shall please you just dump the thing there and say lord at least you so no 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 let your heart be in what you are doing when i finish teaching you these principles you will respect any man that is blessed from the kingdom and you will see why god can punish certain people when they open their mouth castigating blessed people in the kingdom are you seeing now you see that it's not child's play there is what you must do it's not cheap it's not free offerings in the house of god number two i call them kingdom investments your givings for the building of the lord's house kingdom investments every other seed and commitment that you make so that there will be a smooth running of the activities that happen around the house of god i call them kingdom investments lay up for yourself treasures in heaven kingdom investments not necessarily that maybe like project 10,000 like this that could be but you can sit on your own and say lord i'm committing myself god is blessing me there is 50,000 coming in for me maybe 5,000 or 1,000 i'm going to commit myself that this is for kingdom investments this is for building of the lord's house this is between you and god you see brothers and sisters let me tell you please and please don't you think this is some spiritual gimmick to bring out money from people satan doesn't want the church of the lord jesus christ to be blessed there are natural laws we are going to talk about but your natural laws have failed already if you don't comply to the spiritual laws every unbeliever pastor they have commitments to various spiritual houses or places of worship is that true whether they are business people or whatever once there is a project and they hear sometimes even without anybody coming they run because they understand the implication i want you to see how unbelievers play these laws and the way they are building a very great financial future with it commit yourself never be in a place and you don't find something let me tell you see eh? years ago I used to play the keyboard for a ministry a man called reverend emmanuel amechi they were part of the team of people that had the opportunity to preach to obasanjo and all of that now they came and they started a ministry in joss pastor i used to go and play keyboard for them listen nobody ever gave me one naira are you getting me i would trek from my house Maybe sometimes after I come back from my local assembly, I will go there and I'll play keyboard for them. And I will play with all my heart. I was responsible for my finance and everything. That's the law of seed time and harvest. Are you getting me? Kingdom investment does not just mean money alone. Your participation. Every worker in the house is participating in the building of the kingdom. This is practicing the law of seed time and harvest. It's not just your finance alone. The Bible says you will reap where it, it didn't say you will reap where you sowed. It said you will reap what you sowed. So even if you are not here tomorrow, that thing will still bless you. Hallelujah. The only thing I remember getting in that ministry was one bottle of Fanta, I think, and then one cassette during the launching of the man. That was all I ever got. It's my own keyboard, though. Pastor, I will carry it, maybe bike or sometimes from my pocket and i will go there but i was doing it joyfully god is my witness i never complained once to say this man it was even my parents that were saying this 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 boy is a small boy what is all this one again but i was doing it joyfully but god was watching this is what happened to david 
while he was tending his father's sheep, God was seeing him and saying, I'm seeing the heart of a king in this shepherd. Many of us, when you see certain people, you don't know what stories and experiences made God to vow some vow about their lives. There was something Abraham did that made God to vow that in blessing, I will bless this guy. These are the kinds of people that the Bible says he reproved kings for their sake. Are you listening to me? He suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sake, saying, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. How much are you committing yourself? How much are you committing your resources? Brothers and sisters, kill greed this night. Kill greed this night. I saw lots of things in my family that I did not want. And I made up my mind that I was going to change a lot of things in my life. I have seen this thing work in my life. I have seen this thing work in my family to the glory of God. And I have seen this thing work by the grace of God in this ministry. As a ministry, let me tell you, we have done some dangerous things. I will not begin to say it here. Maybe as we proceed, we may say a few of them. When you see God blessing us and there is an open heaven, find out, find out, there must be something working. And this is what we are teaching. Hallelujah. Kingdom investments. The building of the Lord's house from today. Make up your mind. Once money comes, don't just start jumping around and say, oh, I'm happy. Time to chop. Time to enjoy. Uh -uh. Think kingdom. There is a reason why God has blessed me. I am a steward. Part of this money is for me. Part of it is for the kingdom. I skip one thing. Let me help you become efficient in paying your tithe. Get envelopes. Get envelopes. Get envelopes and just put them close to you. So that when money comes, before any devil will come and confuse you, you have put your tithe quickly. Put it and remove it, seal it, and take it away from your presence. Many of us have had tithe of three months, piling close to us. One day the thing gets tough, you just open one. You know, many of us do a lot of funny things. And the fact that God kept quiet about it is because he knows we are humans and he's allowing us to grow. A day will come, you will receive the gravity of that disobedience. Don't touch your tight. It's holy unto God. This is not to threaten you. This is just the truth. It's how the law of the kingdom works. Hallelujah. Two more and then we'll pray. First fruits. Many people have asked me so much question about first fruits. I'll just touch it briefly. This is one of the ways that we can express our givings. Now, um, look up. What is first fruits? In scripture, the concept of first fruit, it was ordained by God, it was practiced by the Jews, it was not just part of the Jewish law. The concept of first fruit, listen, this is the spirit behind the activity. If you don't understand it, even those who practice it do it religiously. Or they do it because some churches have register, all the members, if you drop your first fruit, you sign. Later they call you and say, ah, elder, what is wrong? This is March. You have not dropped anything. They didn't pay you. And it so happens that many churches, the employers and the employees are in the same church. So, and the boss is part of the working committee. You can't lie that they didn't pay you. You see, all those kind of things. So let's get it very straight here. Does first fruit exist? Yes. But listen. Is first fruit compulsory? No. The same way saying is bathing compulsory? No. But not bathing creates consequences. Correct? Are you getting me now? Your first fruit is a symbol. It's a prophetic way of honoring God and showing him, I'm sorry, that he's first in your life. Are you listening to me? First in your life. That when you take your first fruit, and now I'll, I'll explain it in details, and give the Lord and say, Lord, I'm honoring you. Maybe the first profit of your business or maybe your first salary as a worker there are different ways that people practice first fruit others maybe january there are churches and people who their salary for january they take it to god and everything and all of that is it's not just about giving god money it's about telling god that you are first in my life are you getting the concept now 
So if you just bring money and just throw and you are frowning around and say these people serve very wicked people. I hate January. Every January is the time they eat our money. No. Understand the spirit behind what you are doing. Bless you. If you do not practice first fruit, it doesn't mean that you are not going to enjoy the blessings of God. It's just that there are certain dimensions you may not be able to enter. As simple as that. Are you getting me? Your tithing, your giving, your kingdom investments, they all have their inputs to your financial life. It's like saying, if you don't do extra moral, will you pass jam? You know, that's the question. It depends on many factors, the kind of school you went to and all kinds of things like that. But it will always be an advantage and it will add to you spiritually. First fruit. Please, never allow anybody to put you under force and pressure and try to threaten you with a curse. To say, Sam, I'm waiting for your first fruit. If by next week, you don't bring it upon this altar, I will stand on this altar and provoke a curse. Please, don't let anybody confuse you. There are many people, there are many men of God that are bullies. They bully members with all kinds of prophetic prophetic messages and they get it very serious they say i saw a vision a cause was coming upon the church and those who did not give first fruit they were affected and everybody just runs around and say carry and give him please just give him less rest everything that is not done out of revelation will not profit you are you getting what i'm saying i'll just leave it there so first fruit is very important as you grow in your giving and you see the benefits of giving you see that's why our walk in the kingdom is by faith. There are many people their faith cannot carry them beyond certain things. So don't be angry if both of you are blessed and you see somebody making certain progress. There are certain laws he's practicing. Please, are you getting me? I don't want to go into so much detail. I'm just giving you what we need here. The last one that I'll talk about is the concept of what we know as prophet's offering people have suffered because of this thing let's clarify it once and for all is there such a thing as prophet's offering are you blessed tonight by what i'm teaching you praise the lord two scriptures second kings eight from verse eight and nine what is prophet's offering now look up in ancient times listen please in ancient times prophets or oracles of god as we know men who communicated the counsel of god be it from the levitical priesthood and all of that because they ministered in the house of god perpetually are you getting what i'm saying now they had no opportunity to participate in agriculture and other things other secular activities things have changed now but they did not have that opportunity are you following me now and so there were ordinances from god that it was not good and it was not a blessing to go and meet a prophet of God, a true man of God, to go and meet him just empty handed like that. That it does not command honor. You don't honor God, you don't honor him. Are you getting my point now? And the king said unto Hazael, Listen, they wanted to, go, they were looking for this was, um, this was, um, was it Hezekiah now? I believe. Whoever it was, the king. Praise God. <laughs> Take a present. Are you seeing it now? Take a present in your hand. Where's my present? Take a present in your hand and go meet the man of God and inquire of the Lord of him saying, shall I recover from this disease? The king told the man, don't go and meet a man of God empty handed. He said, take something in your hand as a sign of honor. Are you getting me? When it was time for Jacob to enter his proof, I mean for Isaac to enter, um, Isaac to now bless his sons. Is that true? The Bible says he told his son, go and make me venison. Bring something in your hand so that it will provoke a blessing from me. Are you getting what I'm saying? The king said, take something in your hand. Don't go and meet the man of God empty handed. So we see there that that's the concept of prophet offering. An offering, something that you hold in your hands to honor the grace of the servant of God. First Samuel 
9 verse 3 to 13. I'll say it and we'll briefly touch the imbalances there and then we'll wrap up for, for today. First Samuel chapter 9 verse 3 to 13. This was the encounter. And the asses of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. So something was lost. They needed a breakthrough in their life. Please listen. I want to teach you a powerful principle. There is still the law of seed faith. We are coming there. But I want to teach you one very powerful principle. And they were lost. So they needed a miracle. And Kish said to Saul, his son, Take now one of the servants with you. Arise and go and look for the asses. Verse 4. And he passed through the Mount Ephraim and passed so on and so forth and all of that. But they did not find it. Verse 5. And when they were come to the land of Zuf, Saul said to his servant that was with him, Come and let us return. Let my father leave caring for the asses and begin to take thought of us. Verse 6. Listen. He says, And he said unto him, Behold now, there is in this city a man of God. Everybody say a man of God. And he is an honorable man. He said, All that he saith cometh to pass. Now, let us go and meet him. So they were confused. They needed breakthrough in their life. Are you getting me now? This was Saul and a servant. And he said, let's go back. Our father will be worried. He said, no. In this city, there is a man of God. There is an honorable man who is able to solve our problem. He said, let's go and meet him. The word of the Lord comes to, to pass in his life. He said, peradventure, he can show us our way that we should go. Verse 7. I want you to know that this was a culture that was practiced among the ancient. And that's why a lot of them got lots of blessings. Then said Saul to his servant, But behold, if we go, what shall we bring to the man? Are you seeing now? They knew that it was unlawful to go and meet a man of God just empty-handed to say, We have come to meet you. And, and all of that. He said, For the bread is spent in our vessel, and there is not a present to bring to the man of God what have we verse verse 8 now and the servant answered Saul again and said behold I have here a ha in at hand a fourth part of a shekel of silver that I will give the man of God to tell us our way are you following me and so on and so forth and then they met a man and they brought the gift and he told them and he called he was an uh, he called Saul an anointed Saul are you getting what i'm saying so the concept of prophet's offering is simply a spiritual way of approaching a man of god with honor knowing listen knowing that god can use him to bless you and solve your problems now today in our day is the concept of prophet's offering applicable absolutely it is applicable it's simply the law of honor whether you call it prophet's offering or whatever is simply the law of honor let me teach you something brothers and sisters it should not deter you that you don't have maybe money to give and you cannot go and meet a man of god now i'm aware that there are lots of men of god if you come and meet them and you don't have anything they don't hide it there is a basket or there is something nobody will even tell you as you are entering those who are taking you they'll say mr man all your 30,000. There are even those who have put their bill. They have suffered enough. They said, look, I won't be foolish again. Prophecy, 30,000. This and that and that. And it's working for certain people. They may not be necessarily fake, but I think it's inaccurate. Are you getting my point? Money and anointing does not mix together. People are supposed to do things out of revelation. However, on your own part, I never go and meet a man of God higher than me without. Nobody comes to my house and not get something there must be something i must insist that you take something is the law of honor there are some of us who are fond of you know and please i hope you know that i'm not threatening you and say start packing god has blessed me god doesn't owe me anything at all are you getting my point now so don't think it's just some gimmicks to steal out money from people no no my blessing is not tied to you my blessing is tied to my practicing the kingdom principles imagine if god if i was totally dependent on you for my blessing i would have died by now <laughs> ah yeah yeah but god is faithful praise the lord do you believe what i'm sharing with you i will never go and meet a man of god 
higher than me even if he's just to greet even if he comes into a city there are men that i hear that just came into zaria for a program i'm not even related i'll package something maybe a tie or wine or something i'll say quickly take it to that man of god just tell them i went to i, I want to greet them or sometimes i can just put recharge card quickly one five or something is the law of honor i've taught you this commanding results is the law of honor if you've been doing it stop it many of us on your way to go and see a man of god you branch a a, a restaurant chicken republic you blow five thousand there you finish eating and you belt you say hey by now let's just go and see him and you get up and come and you even sit down sir things are not changing you say god will bless us and you know i'm not talking of me it's, it's very bad it's dishonoring very dishonoring so while on one side we don't just teach people that if you don't have a gift it means the anointing will not flow he will not bless you that's erroneous but let me encourage you i want to encourage you have it as a spiritual culture beyond koinonia you will provoke lots of things there are places i go to minister and i tell you the way they treat me and the kind of honor they give me i find out that there are unusual open heavens even certain things that i don't want to share i find myself sharing it a seed can provoke something in your direction when you honor people he said honor your father and your mother he said law honor people hallelujah praise the lord many of you have never blessed a man of god see i say this it's just because i have to teach you you don't know how difficult it is for me to teach all these kind of things many of you have never we are here blessing you day and night i've said it and said it some of you don't even know our birthdays you don't even know my birthday to say kai this person is doing all of this some of you try to call and i caught the call and for one hour you're just talking and rambling and making all kinds of noise and you are not wondering you know this very unemotional attitude there are many families like that they gather their whole family we are coming for deliverance we are coming for this and the man just comes where do i sit down and they sit down the wife too sits down demons are disturbing us in this house we have that uh, is it the deliverance ministry or what is it and you know they are talking is very wrong very wrong no man honor the man of god in scripture and did not have anything you are not buying the miracle but i'm telling you it's a law that will open you to dangerous dimensions of blessings when jacob brought the venison for isaac when he took off the venison it provoked a blessing from within him jesus you believed and i am the lord will use you but before he uses you, that devil of darkness must let you go. Therefore, I speak to you. I see you in the spirit. There is no hiding. You are not of God. And I judge you by the authority of the kingdom I represent. Let her go right now. In the name of Jesus. Let her go right now. fibroid fibroid i'm seeing fibroid we are going to pray we'll pray for every sick person who has come but let's just flow as the holy ghost can i talk to her madam come if you're coming out here for fruit of the womb make sure you are married properly married please we are christians hallelujah fruit of the womb how many years? Just one year. This one year. Yes, sir. But uh, it's two miscarriage. Ah, look at what I'm seeing in the spirit. But the devil is very wicked. I'm looking at this woman and I kept quiet. And then the Lord began to show me Steve. I saw an angel of the Lord bringing a child. Right? Listen to me. But then immediately it entered this realm. I just saw blood. Then I saw an angel coming with a child again. And when it entered this realm, I saw blood. How many times have you had miscarriage? Two times. Two times. This is what I saw in the spirit. That as the angel of the Lord brought a child, but in this realm, I saw blood and it was miscarriage. But Jesus is Lord. See, I'm not doing anything. There is absolutely nothing. 
This is Jesus the Christ, the one who should be exalted. Madam, you believe in the Lord, that's why you are here. According to the time of life, I speak to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will stand before the people of God with your miracle baby. And I see God cleaning your stomach so that they don't tell you there is an infection. Does it make sense to you what I'm saying? In the name of Jesus. It's over right now. Return with your miracle baby in Jesus' name. You too. You're married. Fruit of the womb. What did the doctors tell you? They said there's fibroid. There's fibroid. Because as I was standing, I was hearing fibroid. Fibroid. Come and stand. Listen to me. You will go to ease yourself pass out this whole fiber physically you will see it coming out you believe in miracles huh? because the solution is not operation they will operate you and then it will come back again this is what I'm saying huh? it's not about operation there is a name that is above all names I'm not a medical doctor I'm not negating medicine are you getting my point I'm just ministering in the capacity drink of the wine of the spirit may you never be the same never be the same never be the same not only prayer fire but you are receiving the healing anointing is coming from your spirit the same thing is happening to you both of them please lift your hands there is the healing anointing that will come upon some people right now. Lift your hands. Father, as many of those people right now, right now, right now, is going to come as fire. I see liquid fire in the spirit. Go ahead and shout Jesus once. One to go. Receive it. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. Receive it now, inside and outside. Receive it now, by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Someone hold Shade, hold Shade so she doesn't fall. Hold her, but the healing anointing is coming on her. It's, it's, it's more of a scary, because it has always been there. It has always been there. Three of you, hold your hands. Ken, Kenyan, promise. Hold your hands. Look at me. In the name of Jesus, take it now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Step into new levels, new levels of the anointing, new levels of the power of the Spirit, new dimensions in the Spirit. Hold, please place one hand on your stomach. Say in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, I believe in you. I believe in you. Let fibroid, Let fibroid pass out of my body now. Pass out of my body now. Now watch what happens to you. You prayed it yourself. Fibroid, you are a spirit. Benga, lift your hands. There is an angel standing close to you. Take it now. My dear, touch this lady for me. The Lord has heard your prayer. Come, come. Please save time. Come. Look at me. What is wrong? Why are you crying? It's okay. Child of Jesus is here. Tonight is a night of divine solutions. Look at me. 
lay your hands on your stomach. Let there be a visitation, O God. Right now. I cause evil. It ends. I appoint it to end now. In the name of Jesus Christ. My dear, you will return with your miracle baby. In the name of Jesus Christ. Just hold my hands and look at me. The Lord is touching your stomach. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Hmm. Be made whole right now. In Jesus' name. You? Adam? Where is he? He's at home. What's he doing? Uh, he's walking. He's walking? Uh, he's preparing for his wedding. He's preparing for what? His wedding. His wedding? Yeah. We have to pray so that you will not have an accident on the road. Huh? Where is where are they doing the wedding? In Kaduna. Don't be afraid. No, I'm not a I'm not a doctor. There's no room. This is this is the word. There is only light. You understand? Hold my hands. Lord, in Jesus' name. Let there be perfection right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Almighty name. Your what? Where's your mother, my dear? She's at home. She's at home. Mm. Let's pray for her. The Lord wants to bring miracles for her. There's someone with... You came with a picture of someone. Is it that he's abroad or... Abroad. He's abroad. Because this is what I'm seeing. Hold on now. This is a picture abroad. Eh? She do travel there. But now she's in Abuja. She travels abroad. Who is yes, she? My auntie, fruit of the womb. She got Hold married. Hold on since. now. <laughs> Let me talk to you. I'm seeing four lines on this picture. How many years has she been married? Since 2006. I'm seeing four lines. She's had at least. Has she had miscarriages? Yes, but I don't know how many times. This is four. I'm seeing one, two, three four different miscarriages. They even wanted to try um, anyway. That's not the issue. You believe Jesus Christ will have a healing for it. Lord Jesus Christ, you are mighty in our midst. Glorify your son. Right now, let the power of God touch her. Let it touch you. In the name of Jesus, you return with your miracle. My dear, let me pray for your mother. Father, in the name of Jesus, let there be healing for her mother. And let there be healing for you in Jesus' name. Your sister, what's wrong with her? She got married since 2003 and still up to now. She has no fruit of the womb. Where are you from? I'm from Gardner State. I won't say it here, but you see, let me speak a parable. When Jesus comes into your life, when you need the help of God, you can't mix salt water and clean water. Does it make sense to you what I'm saying? Huh? You can't come and mix salt water and then you want Jesus Christ to add fresh water on top. If you are for God, you must seek him completely. Hallelujah. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about them. You see, when we become desperate for a change, we are humans. And I know that a lot of people will start suggesting a lot of things. They say it's, it's not like it's a herbalist. He used to just see. Look, let me tell you. We've shared this. You can get my teaching on the mysteries of the kingdom. Herbalists and demonic people, they work with. They manipulate spiritual laws, correct spiritual laws. But it is not a spiritual law that makes you a Christian. It is that it must be initiated and sustained by only the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Ken, God is visiting your family. God is visiting your family in the name of Jesus Christ. Ella, the Lord is visiting your family. I'm seeing the angel of the Lord and I'm seeing them going to Kano in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is visiting your family and even you is visiting you. What is happening to you is restoration. Restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is bringing restoration. Hallelujah. We are going to pray for sick people now. So if you came with um, your sick, immediately I pray for this lady. Now is the time so that we can minister to the sick. It's amazing that this is a vigil and it's already morning. Praise God. Um, sweetheart, look at me. 
What's her name? Ladi. 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 In the name of Jesus, Ladi, we bring you the power of the kingdom. By the mercy of God, we command be made whole right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, return with your child. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if you came here specifically for healing, any part of this country or this city, please come out right now. It's time for you to be healed. Time for you to be healed. Come and stand. Please, ushers, just line them up. God is already touching people. Look how many people came specifically to be healed. Hallelujah. Steve, can you come and just lead us in worship while we do that? Please don't remain. Don't worry, we are patient. This is a miracle service. We are not here to waste your time. Please be patient. No fighting, no nothing. Jesus Christ is going to step in. No matter what the situation is. Listen to me. No matter what the situation is, I'd like you to believe in Jesus. As we worship in your presence, there is healing. The Holy Spirit's gentle touch is flowing. Jesus, we Jesus, there is healing in your name. Now, some of you stood here for healing, but the Lord is going to be touching other areas of your life. But please, we are ministering specifically to sick people. We have very few minutes and we have to do a lot of things. Please make sure that you connect while you're seated. Don't be distracted. Hallelujah. As Steve leads us in worship, I'd like us to connect. To what God is doing because there are still at least two or three things that we have to do. Praise God. And in case you've not written your prayer request, God answers prayers in this place. Those of you crying, stop crying. Stop crying. I'm seeing a lot of people crying and it's touching me. My dear, please stop crying. Jesus will visit you. Listen, never criticize the healing ministry. You don't know the pain people are going through. No, there are families here. There are people just standing here. But I tell you the truth, they are dying. There are families that are dying. Look how many people. They all sang praise and worship. Pastor, truly, truly, the reality of God's power must, while we try to teach them to live in that reality of divine health, God is still merciful enough to help them. We cannot, are you getting my point? Lord Jesus, we thank you for the ability to heal the sick. We truly give you the glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, let your healing power be strong. Let every infirmity in this place bow to the Lordship of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let every infirmity bow. As I lay my hands upon you, the Lord sets you free. Sister, look at me. Heal! Now! Your stomach, the Lord is setting you free. So please, let's be organized while they lead worship. Those of us seated, please be praying in tongues and connecting. There are so many things we are going to do. Thank you, Jesus. Let the name of the Lord be exalted in the name of Jesus. Go ahead. Oh, Jesus, be is wrong this is stroke 
complete stroke. You are unable to move. Oh, the devil is wicked. What is this? Father, would you do a miracle in our daddy's body right now? I curse the spirit of infirmity in the name of Jesus Christ. Let life come to your limbs in the name of Jesus Christ. Let life come to your limbs. You are going to walk right now in Jesus' name. You believe that? Look at me. Sir, in the name of Jesus, walk. Come. 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 Are you feeling strength? Come. Walk. Don't be afraid. You will not fall. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for what you are doing. I give you all the praise. I give you all the place. I, I loosen all of the nerves. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ. Please exercise yourself around. You can turn back. Exercise yourself. Give Jesus praise. Careful. Careful for him. This is completely paralyzed of stroke. The devil is so wicked. So wicked. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead, Steve. Let's save time. Thank you, Jesus Christ. My dear, it's okay. Stop crying. Why are you crying? You are what? Spirit husband. The Bible says male and female, not female and spirit. Male and female. Look at me. Weep not. When Jesus steps in, there is hope. Oh, I love Jesus. Look at me. You believe Jesus will set you free? Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Ready? Go ahead. Jesus! 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 Out! Out of her now. Out! I challenge you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That wicked spirit. Out! 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 This lady has been going to church every Sunday. Yet this spirit has been comfortably sitting down. Her academic zero. Everything zero. You leave now never to return. Now! Never to return. For the blood speaks. I come with the rod of a higher priesthood. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. For you are glorious sleep and worthy to be praised. You are the Lamb upon the throne. And on out you out the name of Jesus. Out my voice and pray. You are the Lamb. Be healed. I will the spirit. The blood of the voice You are the For you glory. For you are the Lord. has come not just to you but to your entire family this morning Amen. in the name of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ where are you please let's save time please let's save time time is not on our side 
Komm, 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 komm. There is nothing working. What is Anambra? What's Anambra Street? Anambra, I know, I know. What is Anambra? What do you have to do with Anambra? No, I have no business with Anambra. It's a matter. Because I'm seeing Anambra. Who is, who is there? Is there anyone from here? No, I'm seeing a lady. Oh, this is a lady. Oh. And I'm seeing Anambra. Huh? I think so. maybe you are from the state or something like that. Who? Um, no, no, let me just. I know there are many people. Just follow. Come. Please let's save time. There is so much to do. Jesus, <coughs> let this idol that I see, I'm looking at this lady and I'm not seeing her face. I'm seeing the face of something that is as old as 127 years old. It's something that they worship in an Anambra state. This is what the Lord is showing me. And it has tied down her life. Because I'm seeing chains, but the chains are made up of snakes. In the name that is above all names. Be set free now. I lay my hands upon you as an envoy of God's presence. Be free. Be free now. Let her family go. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Daddy, where are the children? I'm going to pray for you, sir. Things will turn around in your life. I want to assure you. All the way from where, sir? From Kaduna. You came from Kaduna. Jesus, well, don't worry. You understand? I know what is wrong with you. This is not a word of knowledge. I'm aware. But I want you to know that Jesus is Lord. No matter how impossible it is with men, it must go. You are not alone. There are many people with this same thing in this place. The Lord Jesus is there. Hold my hands. You are risen from the dead. You are Lord. Light is shining in the darkness. Jesus, Jesus, you are Lord. I cost this devil right now. Let her go. Out! In the name of Jesus Christ. Lay your hands on your stomach, my dear. I release the power of God. I set you free. You now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Daddy, I'm seeing both of your hands tied down. And the Lord is telling me to release you. Financially, things are buried down. Is that true? Sorry, Steve. I'm sorry. Financially, buried down. And I've been battling with diabetes and hiccup. Hiccups. Hiccup. When it started, it, it seemed like it, it trying to block my chest. How long has this been, sir? It started February. This year? Yes. You came and here? I had been hospitalized for two times on that. On this? Yes. Jesus is going to heal you right now. Amen. Oh, Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I don't know what would have done for people except for the power of the Holy Spirit. Daddy, be healed right now. Please hold my hands. May you begin to prosper by the Spirit of God. I release you and your family members. Be healed. Diabetes, be healed. I rebuke that devil of infirmity in the name of the Lord Jesus. God bless you. All right, Steve, please lead us in worship. Let's hurry up. There are so many people. Please don't worry. I mustn't. Listen, let me tell you something. I think I need to explain something. I don't have to prophesy, like mention your case. Are you getting my point? For you to know that, okay, the Lord is going to touch you. Not at all. So you don't have to push me. Everyone who are going to minister to you. Why are you crying? Come. 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 What's the problem, my dear? What's the problem?
home check. What? Kidney infection and HIV. You know that physically speaking, this is a death sentence. Kidney plus HIV. But not when Jesus, not when he steps in. Sweetheart, with men, it is impossible. But the Lord will give you brand new kidneys right now. And that devil of HIV must pack his load and live your life. See, you know, the reason why many of us never have the anointing is because we don't have the patience to help people. We just want to shine. If you truly care about people, compassion is what moves the release of the anointing. When I see people cry, it affects me. I remember the things that I saw in the spirit. My dear, there is a way. And Jesus is that way. Are you listening to me? I make boast to tell you that you will be healed. Absolutely. It's not trial and error. Look at, look at how, how many people are crying. You just see people standing. But some people have already, it's like they've signed their death warrant. I speak to every hopeless situation in this place. In the name of Jesus, like the dry bones in Ezekiel's valley, there is hope for you tonight. In the name of Jesus, bless you, Steve. HIV never returned. I cause that virus. It leaves your body right now. You will check and there will be no trace. No single trace. And I command those dead kidneys. Let brand new kidneys come from heaven. diabetes so her wounds don't heal and this thing is already eating her legs they're now tying it hold my hands I curse that spirit right now 
the gun. Mommy, please don't cry. This is an elderly woman. Help her with it. Leave her. Leave her. Leave her. I cursed that devil. That pain, that abdominal pain, it leaves now. In the name of Jesus Christ. It leaves now. She's a worker in this house. And in the name of Jesus Christ, she's entitled to the blessings that follow kingdom service. Therefore, I set you free. And the Lord set your family free. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, please. Don't cry. This will dry up. In Jesus' name, God bless you. If they pray for you, you can go. We don't have time to take testimonies. It's already morning. Hallelujah. We'll take any testimonies next week. Thank you, Jesus. Mommy, be healed in Jesus' name. will solve it in Jesus' name. Whatever it is, Jesus is about to touch the whole family. My brother, what's the issue? Spiritual, spiritual things. Spiritual things. Yeah, but a spiritual thing is it's not like you are, you see, please, let me explain something. Jesus is not a magician. You have to press into God. No matter how much I pray for you now, you see, these spirits will live, but ultimately your passion and your desire for spiritual things you follow me now? You must be ready to truly commit your all and walk with Jesus. This is the ultimate prayer. Because you are a great man. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let me pray for you. Huh? Please, when I make the altar call, please, don't hesitate to come out. Lord Jesus, I cast that spirit right now. We'll be healed right now. Let him go. In the name of Jesus. Daddy, in the name of Jesus. Lord touches you. Cause that spirit out. Out. Now. Out. She will not die. Out. Devil of stroke out. Are you seeing? Hold on, please. You see? Hold on. Are you, are you seeing paralysis? You see that this lady is already paralyzing from her face down because it's the devil of darkness. Let her go now. I curse you by the name of the God of heaven. You must let her go. Bless you, Steve. Sorry, I keep interrupting. I just want to use this and explain certain things. My dear, this old twisting of your face will go down. This is a lovely lady. Praise God. Christ. I cause witchcraft. I cause witchcraft. I 
sein kosmisch Kraft.
ushers begin to walk around and correct the prayer requests, please. Please, this is a time to pass your prayer requests. And for those online media people, let's have it so that we can, as soon as we're done, we can pray on it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You are the most. You are the most. Most high, most high, most high. 
Let's all rise on our feet. This is the last session. I love this part because this is where we get to invoke the presence of God. There is, no matter how many things we see, no matter how many people we minister to, this is a representation of the hunger and the desperation of almost everyone here. The Bible says, unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come hallelujah i want you to know that the lord god of heaven answers prayers in this place this is not just some religious activity hallelujah praise the lord pastor ike let me invite you to join me as we pray over this request now i want you to stretch your hands those outside stretch your hands towards the projector and let's just pray in tongues for two to five minutes as we speak over this request. This represents the desire of God's people. Steve, you can join me too. Go ahead, stretch your hands as we pray. Go ahead, pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Rambo Kosuto Protogodobo Shubalada.
seconds. 60 more seconds to begin to declare war in the spirit. Lift up your voice and begin to declare. 60 more seconds. Rato go bamba li kabro do shande gele bala de gede bando lo za. Rikati se gele bro do kabba bali gele bo kolo brana gala bande. Getele bo lo sana bala bande gele bro kabba de gala bande. Ma po tele bana ngra bala de gole bo shande gala bande. Satele bo kabba na gala bro de gede bo sana ga. Gitala bro lo kolo bo si tele gala ba. You have 15 more seconds. Lift up your voice and declare right now. Basho pa bala bo pa bali gele de chana de yala ba. Ma broko pande legere bolo san legere ba rapete gele bo pande gele be dingle gele gele bo san legere ba usi ana na bolo bo timba legere ana gele ba ochi ana mana gele mana na gele oche legere ba batolo bo kite bala legere bo baso pike pande kande lingro dingle dinga tanglo tanglo mana ba ipo san legere ba you tire tire bo san ba ya ba ipo lo san ba la ba. I want you to declare a thunderous amen in Jesus' mighty name. Only those are the overflow. I need to hear your voice in Jesus' mighty name. Let all the people in the room lift up your voice and shout in Jesus' mighty name. Let every nation, every tribe, Every tongue give a thunderous amen in Jesus' name. Wherever you are, make sure your two hands is connected to somebody. The Bible declares, Behold, how beautiful, how pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. The Bible declares, For there God commands his blessing. When there is unity in the house, Rato Pande Predeshan Balada Galaba. I need you to just squeeze our hands. Hold the hand by you. Rana Labo Konde la Mana Noshi and Abana Nogoloshi. In that name that is above every other name. The name that makes demons tremble. The name that makes barren womb open. The name that makes blind eyes open. The name that makes the sick to be healed. In that name that guarantees an answer. We call on that name. As a family, we call on that name as a body. We call on that name united this morning. We decree and declare every secret petition. We decree and declare every prayer request. We decree and declare every heart desire. We decree and declare. By the unction and the authority vested on me by the man of God of this house. I decree and declare answers, 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 answers right now in Jesus' name. Oh my God, you are not saying amen. You are not echoing amen. Let the living shout amen. And so, Lord, we give you thanks. We give you praise. We exalt your name. We lift you far above all else. For there is absolutely no God like you. We ask, oh God, that one more time, prove yourself. The God of the Apostle Selma. The God of Isaac the God of Jacob and their father Abraham we decree and declare every secret petition is answered it's answered in Jesus mighty name 
And finally, let every living soul shout the name of Jesus seven times to seal this great miracle. Can we go right now? One, two, shout! Somebody shout! Somebody shout! Somebody shout! Somebody shout! Somebody shout! When you want to shout the seventh time, I need you to jump on your feet and shout the name that's above all the names. Everybody shout! Jesus! 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 This is the best part of the meeting for me right now. What is about to happen. Because this is where many of you will see the creative power of prophecy. He said, I prophesied as I was commanded. Please, I'd like you to be sensitive. It's already 5.30. Can you imagine? soon will be out of this place but I'd like you to know that something is about to change in your life truly truly I believe that this is the greatest part of this meeting because when the word of God comes your way it does something remarkable hallelujah there's someone we don't have time you don't have to come out now there's someone you've been trusting the Lord. And um, in fact, I'm seeing is a lady. And you're insisting that you must marry by December. And this is a very serious thing. You've, you've implicated yourself. You've said December. But the Lord is showing me April 2015. You're one of them. My dear, you. I'm seeing a lady. God is giving you a word. So don't kill yourself for nothing and say, I must marry. If you want to marry tomorrow, the devil will bring somebody for you. But you see, you have to be careful. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus Christ. I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound. And bones began to be joined to bones. When Jesus appeared to me, one of the things that he did to me was to allow the light of his glory and his presence to enter into my being. And so every time I open my mouth to prophesy, that's all I see, that light. It's like a drug. It steps into your destiny and creates the Garden of Eden. Whatever it is, please, I'd like you to believe. Please, people have changed. The power of God is already moving. Help them, please. I know that we have abused prophecy and in the country around many people make so much boast about understanding the prophetic but in reality you see um, the creative dimension of God's word is the strongest level of the operation of the word. The ability to make something out of nothing. Many of us just know the revelatory dimension. But if anything will ever happen in your life, it will take the power, the creative power. Hallelujah. So as I pray in this few minutes, I'd like you to shout amen from the depths of your heart. And I want you to receive. You can choose to argue it and go back the same. Especially for those of us who um, came from far and near, people traveled all the way. Some have been here all through the week. Please. Because you must return with a testimony. Savior, he can move a mountain. My God is mighty to say. He is mighty to say. Forever. Author of salvation.
Let's sing it one more time. Savior, he can move a mouth. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. Forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Yeah. In the name that is above all names. I prophesy to everyone who is trusting God for direction for the next level of his life be it marriage be it whatever you are at a crossroad and you need the voice of God may you hear the voice of the Lord in the name of Jesus I prophesy clarity in the name of Jesus. You don't have to bring them out. Just, just leave them. You don't have to bring them out again. We're out of time. I prophesy. Everyone who is already moving the wrong direction. Either as a result of wrong advices. Or wrong perceptions about the path. Of both spiritual and physical progress. In the name of Jesus. May the Lord redirect your steps now. May the Lord redirect your steps now. May the Lord redirect your steps now. Anyone about to leave the geography of your anointing as a result of wrong counsel or the quest for greener pastures, the Bible says there is a way that seemeth right. You must be at the geography of your grace to drive. And Isaac sowed not everywhere in that land. In the name that is above all names. May you hear the voice of his majesty. As you sleep tonight. May you hear the voice of his majesty. I pray for every bond here. Who is experiencing stagnation you are marking time and instead of you to make progress you are not moving by extension to every family in the name that is above all names the lord told moses why are you crying to me tell the people to move forward i prophesy over your destiny move forward now move forward now Move forward now. Make progress now. Make progress now. I prophesy over those trusting God to settle down maritally. Every power of darkness tying down your marital destiny in the name of jesus that embargo is lifted now by the blood of jesus that embargo is lifted now sisters i open your marital doors now in the name of jesus no more shall this proverb be used in your life may the lord change your story Hallelujah. Because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness, therefore God, even thy God, has anointed you with an oil of gladness and that oil sets you above your fellows in the name of Jesus. The anointing that distinguishes you. Man toka parata lekata. So bring take it to Lake Bosia. From today, everywhere you go, be distinguished now. Help them, please. So that they don't preach. be distinguished now. Shekate Pokoto. Be distinguished now. No more will you be common. No more will you be like the rest. The hand of God is upon you. No more will you be common. I prophesy. 
from the depths of my heart let an anointing that distinguishes you rest upon you now all those trusting God for jobs let me, there's nothing as joblessness the Bible says he saw them idle and he said why standest ye idle and they say no man employ us he told them go to the vine when God speaks there must be job in the name of the Lord Jesus wherever your job is I don't care what the limiting factors are there is a superior advantage because you are in Christ therefore I invoke man tato sotobala by the ministry of destiny help us wherever you need to be called wherever your cv is i provoke a miracle job now 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 hallelujah I pray for everyone called barren in this place. Anyone called barren in this place. I declare to you according to the word of the Lord. That according to the time of life. May you return with your miracle child. May you return with your miracle child. I speak it. I establish it in the spirit. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 18. It says, Son of man, what seest thou? And he said, Four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Israel, against Jerusalem, and against Judah. So that no man will lift up his head. He said, But I have sent carpenters in the name that is above all names the lord told me he will bring breakthrough i want to prophesy it now now whatever has limited you whatever has limited your family right now in the name that is above all names i come with the rod of a higher priesthood and i command every limitation be broken now limitations be broken now limitations i sense the anointing of the holy ghost limitations be broken now be broken now be broken now let the power of god break every limitation now hallelujah He told Saul, he said, as you return, you will see three men holding bread, but two of them will give it to you. Does that mean they didn't want the bread for themselves? In the name that is above all names. The favor of God that can end the struggles in a man's life. Please believe the prayer I'm praying for you. Please believe it. It's not by power. There is a realm of ease that comes by the favor of God. Therefore, in the name that is above all names, I prophesy, receive favor. Favor. Let the Esther anointing come upon you now. Favor with men. Favor with God. Favor with kings. Favor with destiny help us. In the name of Jesus. Every wine presser and baker that needs to speak to the king on your behalf in the name that is above all names we provoke their ministry now. We provoke their ministry now. We provoke their ministry now. hallelujah whatever you have been trying to do and you don't you don't seem to make progress 
you keep going around circles of the same thing in the name that is above all names everything you have tried and failed go and do it again this time with the anointing in the name of jesus everything you have tried to do and you failed i provoke an anointing upon your life and with this anointing go back and do it again he said master we have toiled all night but he said nevertheless at thy word i bring the word of the lord to your life now what did not work before let it begin to work now hallelujah i pray for every family going through pain and suffering and limitation and bondage every family represented here he said as for me and my house not as for me alone as for me and my house hallelujah in the name of jesus may the fire of god may the fire of the holy ghost bring advancement in every family represented here i command every family make progress move forward make progress move forward move forward hallelujah i speak over everyone here and every family anyone marked for death anyone marked for death oh earth i speak hear the word of the lord we forbid the earth from taking the body of anyone here you remain immortal until your assignment is complete you do not live by the sword therefore you will not die by the sword in the name of jesus you are separated from the wickedness and the harassment of terrorism you are separated from the pestilence and the plagues that cause men to be afraid in the name of the lord jesus christ in the name of the lord jesus christ and for many who are students here mando in the name of jesus every yoke of academic bondage in the name that is above all names i command be free from it now 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 therefore i release upon you the spirit of excellence receive the spirit of excellence on common speed academic exploits in the name of jesus hallelujah for every ministry every business everything that is dead and grounded in the name that is above all names like the dry bones in the valley of ezekiel i command life to it now i command life now i command life now in the name of the lord jesus christ i command life now hallelujah everyone in ministry in this place i pray for you let the doors of opportunity be open up to you You were not designed to market yourself. The Bible said, let her walk speak for her at the gates. I command everything stopping your walk from speaking for you. Let there be an anointing that announces you in the name of Jesus Christ. Every struggle in any area of ministry, we call it to end now. In the name of Jesus. And anyone who is in ministry and you are confused, you really don't know where you stand you don't know the spiritual paradigm you should be representing in the name that is above all names let there be clarity absolute clarity in the name of jesus 
Now lift up your hands. I want to pray for your finances. In the name that is above all names. First and foremost, I cause the spirit of greed that stops you from engaging the principles that will bring true wealth and abundance. I command the giving grace to come upon you in the name of Jesus. I cause the spirit of greed. Let it be far from your life in the name of Jesus. Grace for you to be a faithful tither. Grace for you to be a faithful giver. Grace for you to be a kingdom investor. May God give you wisdom. May God give you favor. May God bless the works of your hands. Therefore, I release a supernatural anointing for you to prosper. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. God gives you wisdom. God gives you ideas in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Everyone here who is trusting God and is saying, Lord, restore. Everyone here who had a better yesterday that is saying, Lord, if there was a way I can turn the hands of time, I prophesy to you. There is a God that can turn the hands of time and cause men to experience restoration. Therefore, in the name that is above all names, we bring back into your life every opportunity that was once lost. In the name of Jesus, opportunity for favor, receive it. Opportunity for healthy connections. Every opportunity in your life that has been wasted by the favor and the mercy of God, we call back that opportunity to return in the name of Jesus Christ. We call it to return in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray finally, whatever has made you cry, in the name that is above all names whatever has brought tears out of your eyes because you were in a state where nothing and no one could help you in the name that is above all names may my God arise for you and that everyone who has laughed at you and said where is their God in the name that is above all names that God will arise for you my God will arise for you my God will arise for you. Now hold on. Before we round up, we're finishing by six. Six on the dot. I'll take five minutes and do something fast. And we're going to have hot praise for five minutes. We can't go without praise. You seal these things that God is doing with praise. Hallelujah. Now keep standing everybody. I want to make an altar call right now, please. Hallelujah. There are many people here inside and outside. You've heard the word of the Lord. You've experienced the power of God, the touch of God, the ministry of God's servants and God's vessels, but you have not made a decision for Jesus Christ. You may be a Christian, but you've not truly made a genuine decision for Jesus Christ. And then there are others you once made a decision for Jesus Christ truly, but you found yourself derailing. Right now in the name of Jesus, I want to give you an opportunity. The Lord is asking you to return home. This is one of the greatest miracles. I know that there are many of us outside. Forget about your friends and whoever you came with. You're saying, Lord, I'm coming to commit myself genuinely. I'm inviting you right now as I count five. One, God bless you. God bless you. Appreciate them. Two, I know they are coming. God bless you. Please hurry up and come. It's a great thing. It's a great thing. Three, appreciate them. I believe there are so many other people that the Lord is speaking to. Don't be afraid. This is a family. Don't be ashamed. It's time to come to Jesus genuinely. Genuine repentance, not emotional hype. To make a decision that determines the next course of your life. Four, God bless them. You are still coming. I believe that the Holy Ghost is still speaking to some other people. Don't remain there. Five. 
I'll begin to pray now, but you can still come and join us. God bless you. The devil is a liar. No power will stop you. In case the Lord is still speaking to you, please find your way. Run to Jesus. It's the greatest decision you will ever make in your life. Hallelujah. Those of us here, thank you so much for coming. We salute your courage. I want to lead you to make the greatest prayer and decision in your life. After all is said and done in this life, this is all that will matter. The quality of the decision you have made today will determine your eternal destiny. Hallelujah. Lift your right hand and say after me, Lord Jesus. Please mean it from the depth of your heart. Don't recite it like a poem. Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I believe you died for me. You shed your blood for me. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare today that I'm saved. I'm a child of God. My name is in the Lamb's book of life. I denounce sin and Satan. The power of sin is broken over my life. From today, I arise a champion. Holy Spirit, come and live in me. Make me an ambassador for the kingdom in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for these ones. They have come before you. Spirit of the living God, I pray that you preserve them. Let their decisions be genuine. Grace for them to stand in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please arise. God bless you. Thank you for this great decision. I'd like you to follow the gentleman waving his hands. Just follow the gentleman waving his hands. Appreciate them, Koinonia. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Now, let me just perform two quick functions. Pastor Ike came with his CDs. How many of you were blessed by the ministry of Pastor Ike? Come on, celebrate grace. Koinonia, you know better than this. Celebrate grace. Hallelujah. He's here with his CDs. He brought as much as one, two, three, four, five, five complimentary copies for me. Please help me tell him thank you. Hallelujah. They are available. I believe that um, there are some with Jordan Bookstore. And I believe that it's possible to get probably a few limited copies. Very powerful. Really very powerful. And um, let me use the opportunity to just introduce to us one more time. Aaron Dandodo and Susan Legbo. Where are you? They are getting married on the 18th. Aaron, quickly. Susan. Let this be the way they clap for you during your wedding. You will reap what you sow. Where is she? You are not doing again. Hallelujah. They are wonderful, faithful people in this house. Aaron has been with us for years. And Susan is a member of the prayer band. Praise the Lord. And um, we thank God for what God is doing. Stretch your hands pray for them. Their wedding is on the 18th. They will be tying the knot in Mina. Pray for them. Say, Lord, every resource required is provided. And many of you, God may lead you to sow seeds into their lives. Go ahead. Go ahead. So connect with what God is doing. Connect with what God is doing. Lord, we ask that you bless them. Bless Aaron. Bless Susan. We bless your wedding. Most importantly, we bless your marriage. May you experience the hand of God in your home in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much. Please celebrate them one more time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This morning, Pastor Yinka will be um, will be called a husband proper. <laughs> Hallelujah. We give God all the praise. A few people left the day before yesterday to grace the wedding. Um, the wedding of Aaron and Susan will be at UMCA Church behind Mr. Biggs Tonga at Mina State. Reception is at Honorable Justice Idris Legbo Hall near the government house at Mina Niger State. As many of us, Aaron has been a blessing to the body of Christ. Please let's invest our resources, and then our presence. Um, this is from the prayer department. There will be massive Holy Ghost baptism on Tuesday.
for those of us who have been trusting God, please, if you are here, for adventure, you are new, and you've not been filled with the Holy Ghost, with evidence of praying in fluent tongues, fluent tongues, not just talking anyhow. You need to receive a real baptism, genuinely. Join the prayer band Tuesday, the 30th of September, at Rema Chapel time is 4 p.m. Please invite your friends and loved ones. Project 10,000 is still on. Please be part of it. And the Lord will help you. Praise the Lord. You can book for counseling immediately after the service. Uh, the protocol department will be waiting here. Please, if you are coming for counseling from another state, would advise that you come at least on Sunday. Praise God. Or at least Monday, leave early in the morning so that... Um, you can come and be settled. Praise the Lord. The booking ends tomorrow by 6 p.m. This free bus transport is limited immediately after the service. For those going to Shikan, Congo, please wait at the projector stand outside. Take note of our official lines, both um, um, the protocol and the media lines. Please take advantage of them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I also want to announce that the general workers retreat has been shifted. Please, all workers, because of the um, nature of the weekend, please and please, we have decided to shift it so that everyone can rest. Hallelujah. The various heads of departments will communicate this accordingly. Okay. The audition for the worship team will be on the 1st of October. Hallelujah. So all applicants, please make sure you, you mark that date and prepare. You can meet your head of department immediately after the service for more information. Hallelujah. School of Ministry students, we are not having lectures today again. Please, our lectures will be tomorrow since there's no retreat again. Praise the Lord. Tomorrow, 2 p.m. prompt. 2 p.m. prompt. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please announce it to those who are coming in from Kaduna if they are not around so that they don't bother taking um, the pain to come and then not. We just want everybody to rest. So everyone you can use today and rest. There are other meetings. CGC is having its uh, convention and then there is a program that is happening in I think God Life today. Um, Aaron and um, one of the business experts, they are putting on a program. So there are many things happening at the same time. It's quite a busy weekend. And for many of us who have been preparing for this meeting, so please afterwards, take out time and rest. Those who have been fasting, it's time to eat. Praise the Lord, so that you don't die in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me take this time to appreciate the Orions. Please, I'd like you to celebrate them. Please, Koinonia, celebrate them. It's an investment of honor. Hallelujah. I want us to celebrate the redeemed dancers. Wonderful. It was so, so lovely. Hallelujah. I'd like us to celebrate the man of God, Steve Strings. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. We love you. Love you. We truly honor you. I like us to celebrate the dear woman of God. Goodness, I was blown away. Please, Rosemary, please celebrate her. Thank you. Thank you so much. May the Lord honor you. Thank you for coming all the way. And I like us to celebrate Pastor Ike and his wonderful wife. I think she should stand here and let's see her. Pastor, you spoke so much about her. Please, ma. You know she's not. Come on now. Pastor, do it for us. Those of you who plan to be bad husbands, that's going to be the last prophecy before we leave. May God change your mindset in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Please celebrate them. May your home be like this. Every Tom and Jerry marriage, I curse it in Jesus' name. Bless you, man. Thank you so much for coming. Hallelujah. And then I'd like us to celebrate every department in this house. Wonderful people. Wonderful people. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate our online community. There are more people following online than you can imagine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. All those worshiping with us for the first time, 
as we round up please i'd like you to come out we have a prayer and a blessing for you make your way to the front inside and outside make your way to the front right now god bless you god bless you god bless you thank you please come those who are worshiping with us for the first time this is your first time here aside from our invited guests you're welcome don't let anyone sit down around you who is coming here for the first time we have a prayer and a blessing for you thank you thank you very very much Pastor. hallelujah thank you so much for coming this is koinonia hallelujah a meeting put together by eternity network international your life will never be the same thank you for the investment of your time this is our vigil and we bless god for your presence i guarantee you that you will return with such a hunger for spiritual things may the lord honor you in jesus name father we bless them in the name of jesus christ the lord will meet your expectations beyond your imagination you are blessed as you return you return with the presence of god you return with the anointing of the holy spirit in the name of the lord jesus christ please i'd like you to just follow the gentleman waving his hands he will have your information and he'll welcome you more warmly on our behalf in the name of the lord jesus christ hallelujah let's share the grace after that we're going to have five minutes of hot praise hallelujah pastor i could round up this meeting with hot praise hallelujah the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore amen surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen i'll be here very briefly to say hi to as many people god bless you pastor sir my God is good, yo. My God is good, yo. My God is good, yo. Come on, come on, come on, come on. My God is good, yo. Somebody worship, somebody pray. 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 To say, yeah, I will lift him higher. Yeah. subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share it to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and then if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin.